which means you could be running around Texas with a sword right now. Well, let's move to Texas, All boys. Eves move to Texas. I seriously do want to take a vacation to Houston. Um, although any part of Texas, man. Watching, I, I follow this channel. Um, fucking something something guns. Uh, Demolition Ranch. Uh -huh. I think I mentioned it before. Dude just does dumb shit with guns. Or buys new guns, shoots stuff. Um, it's General Gun Channel. And, like, one of the latest videos was him, uh, his buddy who has a YouTube channel that's devoted to fucking bass fishing. He's a professional bass fisher. Goes by the name Lunkers. And they had just met at some some event uh, a country music singer. So he was there with them. And it's just three country boys having fun out in the woods on their property shooting guns. And I'm like, I want that life. Country, like, just rednecks, they just have the most fun. Just it just looks so like so much fun. Like if I wish I liked country music more, so I could just be a good old boy, ain't doing no wrong. <laughs> now see, the only downside to that is uh, being like, seen as a racist cousin fucker. Yeah, so which like, I mean yeah. is not all of them. Obviously, these guys are pretty awesome. The dude from Demolitions Ranch, he he's legit, like a really cool guy. Religious, but you know, yeah, some people well, are, but. It's still, it's like, I'm like, God, I want to wanna hang out with rednecks and go shoot guns and shit. I just wish I knew rednecks that had property. <laughs> like, or, had some yeah. land. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, uh, remember when uh, we went out, we had that uh, guy we knew named Cody. Yeah. And we went out to that farm he was living on mm -hmm. where he was trying to screw that chick. <laughs> he was just trying to screw that chick, yeah. And uh, we went and shot guns. Mm -hmm. We shot, like, shotguns, like, twice, and then they're like, you guys got to leave. Because his girlfriend went nuts with that, that uh, twenty dumb gauge fucking bitch, yeah. Like with his shitty sawed off. Uh, it was a twenty gauge. I know it was a twenty gauge, but it was it was a piece of shit that was fucking uh, the, even the. It was like an was off brand remel. Uh, fuck. Well, I I don't I think it was a Mossberg, but it was cut down. It had a pistol grip. Yeah. It had no stock. Um, and the pistol grip wasn't wasn't even attached right. No, no, and it she wasn't. just went and fucking like mag dumped super yeah. fast. Where she, we were shooting hay bales yeah. and targets, she's shooting from the hip and not even fucking aiming. She's shooting above the stop that we had. I um, think it wasn't I, a good stop, but we were no. shooting shotguns so and twenty twos, so nothing was going to penetrate uh, like four hay bales. Not really. But she's blasting off in the air above. And as fast as she can pump the goddamn shotgun. And that's that was, when his that dad was, annoying. was pissed. So Which, how you guys doing today? Yeah, we, somebody should have just fucking tackled her and took the gun away. I mean, she oh. was like 100 pounds. All we had to do was like... Cody basically her. did. He grabbed the gun out of her hand, but obviously after it was empty. Yeah, was, by that point it was pointless. Yeah. And he was an idiot anyway. Dumbass. So, yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't have ever gone out to do that again with those idiots. Because this... I'm, I'm more safe Yeah. with my guns because I was brought up, you know, proper... You know, I mean, to and treat them the way I, they should be treated. I wouldn't do that again. Um, not because I was brought up with guns or anything, just because I have common sense. Yeah. Like, you know, common sense is like. It takes five minutes to learn the rules of, you know, don't sweep anybody, don't point a gun at anybody, don't fucking I, aim I, at something you're not going you know to shoot. I learned that from fucking uh, a shoot 'em up. Yeah. When he's sitting there and he's got the gun in his hand, he's got the baby. He's like, you never point this at the end at anything you're unless willing you're, willing, to kill. you're not willing to kill. Yeah, nope. like always assume it's loaded. Blah blah blah. Like he's just there. Yeah, he's no, teaching he this toddler the the, the finer points of gun safety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like not even a toddler. That that baby was like that was an infant. Yeah, yeah, that was an infant. That baby. It was obviously older than that, but it was supposed to be like a less than a week old. <laughs> but it's like. Such a good movie. How the stupid, fuck? Stupid, stupid good movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, I will always sing the praises of that movie. But yeah. anyway, how you guys doing today? Hey, guys. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And today, we're bringing you some E3 news. Yeah, stuff. E3 was this week. Or, I guess, technically it was, still going on, it was but nobody this gives weekend. a shit after It was this the weekend. And, uh, yeah, but nobody gives a shit after the announcements. Not really, or the, no. the main shows. Which, there were only, like two three main shows i think no there were there was microsoft square bethesda um the pc game which i didn't even i have didn't see a single thing about and uh devolver digital and i might be missing another one i was only counting devolver digital and nintendo and so. then nintendo was uh there's technically during e3 not at e3 they didn't do a conference which i'm 
Oh my god. Um, just just I'm not even gonna bury the lead. That was the best thing because conferences are fucking boring as hell. Yep. And they're stupid. Yep. Holy yeah, no, shit. I, I agree wholeheartedly with all the things you just said. They I they must have either had nothing but Bethesda employees at the Bethesda concert or conference, or they paid them all to clap at the end of every sentence because they, they, they announced other than the doom 2016 or the new doom annihilation. That's it. Right. Annihilation? Eternal, eternal, whatever. Fuck man. Fucking doom. Catchy name. Insert here. Doom killed demons. Yes. And then like Wolfenstein, the, uh, twin sister fucking shoot em up Nazis game. Uh, uh, like they young announced blood. nothing good. Young bloods. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Young bloods. Not that just terrible fucking awful shit and every sentence people they're like today we have games yeah like it was so fucking bad it was like they didn't even let todd up on stage for very long todd didn't give me any lies i was disappointed i didn't even get my lies from todd man that like what kind of fucking like show is it when you don't even get lied to by todd howard they showed, they announced or showed zero, absolutely fucking nothing from any new Elder Scrolls or Starfield. So I'm kind of glad I missed this. Um, no, it wasn't worth it to watch at all. Most of what, most of E3 it I wasn't, missed it wasn't because even I was working. Cringy good. Like most of it I missed because I was working. So I yeah. don't, I don't care. I watched after. I, I don't think I've cared about E3. Um, no. Fuck, dude. I, I'm years. pretty sure I stated this last year. I don't think I've cared about it since early 2000s. Legitimately. Back, back before they started letting the public in. I've been watching, I, when I watch E3 for like the last five or ten years, it's been like expected to be, I want to see one or two things I know I'll enjoy, yeah. but, but it's like to see the cringe or expect to be disappointed and see what stupid shit they say, how they lie about stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nothing worth watching at E3. It's so funny. I mean, yeah, I think it was after Devolver Digital show last year. Like that was good. They're like the they only take ones. The piss out of it. They're the only ones I think I'll ever watch again. Uh, that Nintendo, and I only watched. They Nintendo. didn't do a conference. It's they not didn't. in front of a fucking crowd that they have to stop to have a laugh track every five minutes. No, they they were just there. Ugh, they the, were fucking insane. The three things that people are were uh, three. Yeah, let's say the three real things because Nintendo had a lot of stuff, but fucking keanu reeves at the microsoft conference that really the really fucking Jap- that really really Japanese, Japanese lady yeah Super who could not speak any fucking english and the dog and the dog yeah. that is it those were the only re- like conference things that were w- e- even remotely good yeah at the conference game wise there's a bunch of good games you know cyberpunk yada 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 yeah, we can yeah, go yeah, yeah. talk about each one individually but the funny thing this year though i will admit I watched, I got, I, well, I didn't watch it because I was asleep for work that night, but legitimately I was excited for the Microsoft conference because I thought last year they did nothing but talk about how many developers they had. They showed no games Holy except shit. for some indies. It's windy as fuck out there. And now it's raining. Yeah. So they showed no games. They talked about how they bought all these developers. Yeah. They, good developers too. Yeah. Um, and it's like, oh my God, they're going to be developing some shit next year. You're like, we got to see. So then Sony drops out of E3 this year, which means it's wide open for Microsoft to come in and just drop a giant Microsoft dick on the table and be like, look at this shit. And what I'm uncomfortable. And then, and then you'll love it. It's that fucking Windows dick. And then, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Long dick of the mic. No, dude, it's called Microsoft. It can't be that yeah, it's, it's not hard. It's soft, but it's huge. So it's just they're gonna sh- just anyway. No. We won't go any further with it. But then there was a rumor like two days before E3 that I I didn't I didn't believe the rumor, but I thought like the connotations of it were there. Is that the rumor would be um, Miyamoto would be on stage at the Microsoft conference. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, if even a, a percentage of that is true, because there's this whole year has been rumors about the stuff Microsoft is doing behind the scenes with Nintendo and Sony cross play and like how much they're doing all this interesting stuff. And they're, they're moving kind of away from being their own console and focusing on that to like opening up gaming throughout, you know, I guess yeah. Wh- yeah. however you want For- it, working with, other companies right i mean like i said i mean it's been shown that they're working with sony now yeah to build 
in Microsoft Azure their own cloud computing service, a cloud gaming service. Yeah, with the X, they announced it. It's the X Cloud, right, for streaming. Which we already knew that was happening. That was yeah. announced two months ago or something like that, a month ago. And now we with, know exactly when it's coming. Out. And now, yeah. uh, and and they're doing that to go up against Google when mm-hmm. Google announced Stadia. So it's like. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was, I was because like, I mean, if anybody has like infrastructure to do something like that, Microsoft, it, it's does. going to be Microsoft. It's going to be Google. Like they, they're yeah. these are two big fucking heavyweights because cloud computing has been Google, one of Google's big businesses and behind the scenes, aside from ads, for a long time. Yeah, and the same can be said for Amazon. The same can be said for Microsoft. So yeah, and and so I was kind of like legitimately for the first time in a while looking forward to this E three specifically Microsoft's conference like. I, there could be some crazy shit. I mean, they might announce Master Chief is in Smash or something on the, at their conference. Like, I was the, you know, right, who right, knows yeah. what could they could do. So I'm like, oh, this, you know, this could be good. So I wake up, I check headlines and only see, like, Halo Infinite trailer and Cyberpunk 77. Yeah. Were the first two things I saw. The conference was still going on for a few more minutes. But I was like, okay, I got to, you know, check it out. So I start watching it. Fucking jack shit. Yeah. Absolutely nothing like yeah. it's immensely disappointing they showed fucking two exclusives that was halo infinite which was a f- shitty teaser and uh gears of war 5 which i don't just care don't about. give a shit about don't anymore. care about yeah although the multi uh, we can talk later about the multiplayer mode they showed looks re- actually legitimately fun right but other than that they had psychonauts 2 and then a bunch of games that are shit about Psychonauts. Actually, a lot of people do. Yeah, that's no, that's, a that's a game. That's a game that it's following is something I always wanted to play because I know the game is awesome. Right. And legitimately, like the amount of people that really, really enjoy that game, I'm like, I know I would probably like that game, and then I just never played it. So Psychonauts two finally coming out from Tim Schafer is pretty awesome. And yeah, I, they I, announced I, that they bought Double Fine Studios. Right. So I'm like, there could be com- some more cool shit come from them. All right, so before we move any further. But nothing, nothing else did they announce. Before we go any further. So garbage. Before we forget, this week's news is the stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. God. Uh, Luke and I actually both came across the story, and we both wanted to talk about it. Yeah, because um, it's really stupid. I, I'm looking at the mirror.co.uk as headline, because it was just the first one that I found when I remember that this was a thing. <laughs> There was a man found with cocaine on his nose that told police it wasn't his. Um, Fabrico Torres, I mean, I don't know. I'm not even going to try. Had a powdery white substance on his nose. The car he was in was stopped by the police. Um, he was a passenger in the car. It was <laughs> pulled over on Sunday. So this past, uh, yeah, this past Sunday. Um, as a routine traffic stop, nothing major. And the deputies for Hillbers County noticed, because this was in, uh, you guys want to venture a guess where this was? <laughs> what state in America it was? Yeah. I can tell you it's not Ohio. Yeah. It's not California. It's not Montana. It's, it's not, not Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> no, it's fucking Florida. Yeah. Which was not, by the way, it was not a Florida man post when I found it. No, it was not It was not, not, not The Onion. <laughs> no. Uh, for me, it was a news. It was under the subreddit, News of the Stupid, which is where I got this idea from the beginning. Yeah, nice. Um... <laughs> He was swapped, you know, he was swapped by the cops. They tested it, uh, confirmed that it was cocaine. And he just, he stuck to a story. It's not, it's not cocaine. It's not mine. It's not mine. Oh, did he say it's not cocaine at first? No, he said it's not my cocaine. It's not my coke. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, so someone it fo- wasn't what, his. forcibly shoved it up your nose? So someone just like, you know, <laughs> they just, you know, they did that palm thrust where there was just coke on their their, their palm. and just <laughs> What I love is, okay, so what? How did so they only can charge him for what's on his nose, right? Well, no, because they can also charge him for the other shit they found with him. Oh, in the car, okay. Um, which, by the way, they found 250 grams of marijuana, 13 Xanax pills, and a small baggie of coke <laughs> on him. Oh, well, oh my. Um, you snort. Okay, I could imagine, like, I, I would imagine that at that stop, I was thinking, because I didn't read the whole story. It was just, it was a routine traffic stop. Yeah. That's all it was. I was thinking that he must have been like, oh shit, cops, and just tried to snort all his coke. No, he which, was just, which, he which, had just snorted some coke by and then wiped his nose. By the way, don't do that. Yeah. That's, unless you, like, well, okay, unless I'm, not gonna, long... unless, I'm not going to put it unless, don't, don't snort coke, but if you've got to get rid of all your coke, don't have more than like a line left. Because if you do, you're going to die. Like, 
Just don't. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you how I know that. Just don't. Yeah, just throw but it 250 window. grams of marijuana, that's a lot of marijuana. If he, yeah. Like, if like, he didn't have more shit on him, he could have been like, man, it's just powdered sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it on your nose? Because I, I, I love donuts. I love donuts, <laughs> officer. <laughs> But why is it on your nose and not around your face? Oh, I already licked it from my face. I didn't know it was on my nose. Yeah. See, that's my question. That's if you didn't have all that other shit on him, because I know you. If he's not driving, yes, he was a not, passenger. I don't know if there are, there might be laws against being intoxicated on on drugs. I mean, okay. I don't think so though. I don't think they could charge him with anything other than the residue on his nose if he didn't have the other stuff on him. I, I don't know that they could charge him for anything. You're absolutely correct. If that had been just that. Yeah, if he didn't have like all if the it other had, shit. If it had stopped at just having coke residue on his nose, I think he would have been fine. Because The I, fact that he was carrying like three ounces of marijuana on him yeah. and fucking... Um, or no, I'm sorry, not three ounces. It's closer to 250 grams is roughly uh, eight ounces or so. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking marijuana. Um so it's half a pound yeah. 60, yeah oh my god that is a lot of fucking weed yeah i mean the bag that they're showing in this picture is huge it's pretty big fucking um, bag of weed. and 13 xanax it's a lot of weed to us who don't have legal weed i mean even if you're like a dealer that's a fair amount of weed sure like but i mean in a legal state when you you're know, sitting you might there have that in a jar <laughs> sitting on your counter right well yeah but even then, that still costs them pretty jealous, penny. Probably, yeah. yeah, no. But um, but yeah, no. It's, it's like like two hundred fifty grams of marijuana. Though you you can seriously sell that for like, you know, five grand. We've heard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, we've heard. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, um, no. It's like it's like, what the fuck, dude. Yeah. Like like you, <laughs> he was of course arrested on drug charges oh, because yeah. that much marijuana is a total intent to distribute. Mm-hmm. Because it's like above like thirty grams or something, because it doesn't take much, and uh, you know thirteen Xanax pills, which may not necessarily ne- be illegal on their own because they're a prescription drug. You might just have a valid prescription, but the fact that you didn't have them in a prescription bottle with a label and his name yeah, on, and if yeah. you don't have a prescription, yeah, they can charge. Um, it. So yeah, like it's look, that's substance. just something I found amusing when I read this that's story. Great. I was just like, really? I've heard I've heard horror it's not stories. Yours? Because <laughs> our state is decriminalized. Our state is decriminalized, but you can still get fined for it. Yes. You can yeah. still get arrested for it if it's above a certain amount. That's what I'm saying. And so not to I've mention, heard stories where people will have very small amount on them or just what they've, you know, small amount and what they've smoked. And they'll actually scrape the bowl and take all of that, add it to whatever you have. And then if that puts you over the limit, that'll get you fucked over. <laughs> Interesting. Because yeah. stuff in the bowl you really can't do much with. No. Yeah. No, but they will scrape every teeny bit they can um, to charge it with. Well, I think I think at, at state level, anything below thirty grams is decriminalized, and yeah, then above that you get in like trouble. That. The funny thing, uh, interestingly Still enough, the Cincinnati Cincinnati Ohio are are um, in the city limits. Uh, in the city limits, the uh, city council just voted five to three to decriminalize up to a hundred grams, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of neat. Uh, of course, that won't stop anybody from. It really would have been nice if they had legalized up to 100 grams. Right, that would have been even better. Just um, criminalizing. One of, still get a ticket. I do know that one of the three who voted against it mm-hmm. was because she wanted decriminalization and uh, the um, Re- retroactive release. Yes. Yeah. yeah the retroactive uh, charges dropped type type stuff. That's something. It's like don't... she wanted that to go hand in hand with it, and that's why she opposed yeah. this initially. That's something that people kind of, I think, a lot of times forget about when we focus on legalization, decriminalization, and things, is that there's a lot of people in prison who need to be let yeah, they need out. to be let out in prison for who knows how long for fucking marijuana charges, which like, is ridiculous. Some guy just bought like a dime bag off of now gets arrested, and the only thing he's ever done in his entire life was sell marijuana, and now he's in de- jail for four years. But then you got crazy McFuckface over here who just killed his wife and girlfriend, or his wife and like three kids. And what? Well, fuck it. Why not? He killed his girlfriend too because he was having an affair or whatever. And he gets a year and a half, two years. Well, I mean, plus unless, gets let out on probation or something like that. Unless he went to a mental institution, but that's twenty five years per per. <laughs> yeah, but that's depending on how they how they manage to charge him. Like it, manslaughter. Is what's much more less likely than is he went and raped his raped a woman and then got out after yeah. six months for good behavior because he's a good Christian pastor or something like that. 
which is what happened in uh that reminds me fucking uh, some goddamn bible belt state recently that reminds me of that um, story a tweet that was recently released by a pastor like a catholic priest or whatever 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 you call him talking like bashing basically bashing pride month about how it was dangerous for children dangerous for children and then the church (laughs) of satan from the fucking the church of satan went and said hey we respect you you know it's up to our members whether or not they want to celebrate pride month because as a whatever we are we approve of all sexual genders identities and all that consensual stuff right yeah they said just to be safe keep your kids away from catholics yeah. <laughs> oh yes shots fired shots I mean, fired if there's, if there's any religious group i wouldn't want to let you know my son my young son near it's a catholic church which i mean they're they're very much separate from satanism their search of satan and satanism are not the same thing but this is not the podcast to go into that. Um, no. I too, I'm too tired. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I read that. I was like, oh, that's yeah. That, I, I saw love that, that story and was like, that's that's the one. Yep, that that's beautiful. That is that makes me laugh. Makes me laugh very very much. Um. Anyway, let's get back to E3. Yeah. Um. So I didn't watch anything but Nintendo's. Like I didn't get yeah. the chance to watch anything else. Uh. But the one thing I did see that I very, very much liked is that Keanu Reeves is going to be a character in uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Like, that's that's really, really cool. And, it, and his appearance, um, I later read, is not, like, limited to a cameo. He's apparently your sidekick throughout the whole fucking game. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's like a mentor-type character. Yeah. Um, I, oh, the way he was described... Which 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 uh, Arkham game is it where Joker's basically inside Batman's head the entire time? Uh, that would be the third one, Arkham Knight. Um, uh, basically he's apparently just like that. Nice. Yeah, where like he's just inside your head the whole time. I was talking to somebody at work, where in this new trailer they showed at Microsoft's conference for Cyber Cyberpunk, one of the best parts of any the only good part of any live conference um other than the dog and the asian chick who couldn't speak english but was so goddamn adorable it didn't matter yeah um was she was so happy yeah for the horror game it's scary i think she said something like that but uh she's like mantis completely out of place was but adorable it was keanu reeves coming out to show off cyberpunk 2077 and somebody's shouting, uh, you're, what did they say? You're gorgeous? No. They said, uh, you're, you're breathtaking. breathtaking. And he's like, you're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. <laughs> it's just, it was awesome. Keanu Reeves is fucking cool. It's, and uh, that trailer yeah, was great. But, uh, but we, were, we were talking about the fact that in the trailer, they show uh, the sidekick character from all the other trailers we've seen dies. So the guy I was talking to at work was like, I wonder if like, they showed all that stuff before and then they got Keanu Reeves signed for the game and then decided, well, we'll just fucking kill off this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it made Keanu Reeves your partner. And I hope not. Cause that guy seems really cool. And it's seen And it's, if the game, if they're not bullshitting us about choices mattering and how you approach missions mattering, I hope you can keep that character alive. Right. Right. But we'll see. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, oh my god, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, fuck this guy. Who gives a shit? Yeah, right. You know what? I mean, I would take... Wake up, samurai. I, I, I will... city to burn. I will I've take... watched that trailer like six times. Did you? I yeah. still haven't watched the trailer. I feel kind of bad. Oh, so good. I mean, okay, all I did on Tuesday was sleep. All I did yeah. on Wednesday was sleep. Actually, Tuesday I did watch the uh, direct um, because I ended up calling off work that day. And I downed like five monsters. And it was the biggest mistake that I've made in a long time that isn't related to a relationship. Yeah. And, um, oh, God, I hated it. Anyway, I did manage to watch the Nintendo Direct. We're getting Breath of the Wild 2 and other cool shit like that. Um, but I caught all of the Keanu stuff on that. Like, I, I caught the memes for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, I didn't the see memes the memes have been amazing. I didn't this. see the actual thing. Uh, but I did get to see the source video from when Keanu points at the guy. Like, he record- he was recording it, and he yelled it out, and Keanu looks over at him, like, eye contact almost, and says, no, you're breathtaking. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And apparently, uh, Keanu just, apparently just didn't expect the crowd reaction to him coming out on stage. No, like, oh, he no. Had, well, he-, he comes out, and it's immediately, like, 
absolutely uproarious cheering. Oh my god! And then he's oh. like, yeah, and he's like, tries to start, and he's like, like it has to basically be like, come on, come on, I gotta, I, you know, I gotta talk real quick. And then everyone's still like, fuck you, we're gonna cheer for you, man. <laughs> it was great. Everyone's like, and nuts, we, because it was kind of Keanu Reeves, and, and everyone like, just watched a fucking I mean, awesome movie yeah, in John Wick. You, you, had, you had three John Wicks. You had some other great movies he's been in, where yeah. he just he has that that minimal. And He's like f- a darling of Hollywood. No controversies. Like recently, it even became a meme that he, anytime he takes a picture with women, he's not putting his hands on them. Yep. Like, because he ain't taking any fucking chances. He's not taking any chances, and everyone's like, "This is wholesome." And all the guys are like, "Yeah, wholesome, motherfuckers, careful." <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is that that's a take on the hover hand. That's what got, I was like thinking. Got, I, was, like, I was like. Don't they t- call people cringy for the hover hand usually? But no, Keanu Reeves does it, and it's brave and powerful. It's Keanu Reeves, though, so when he does it, it's like... he's handsome. It's when Keanu Reeves does it, it's like, he's letting these mortals... <laughs> to go net- yes. He's letting he's these mortals these bask mortals. in his presence, you know? like He's blessing these mortals. And, like, there's that one that. picture of him, the blonde and brunette, and he has his hands down, just like Jesus would, and it really does just, look yeah. like... It really does look like he he's letting Lord him bask in his presence. <laughs> he's our Lord and Savior. Yes, he's my new religion. Somebody was talking about the conference I saw, and they're like, yep, Cyberpunk 2077 trailer, blah, blah, blah. And then Jesus walked on stage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd went wild. Yes. Jesus rose from the dead, and he came he back. from the grave. And, and he went to heaven, and then he came back down to play in Cyberpunk 2077. And be John Wick. And be John Wick. And just be, dude, could you imagine, like, like all right, did you, oh, what is that? Family Guy. Yeah. They did a movie, they did a parody, and it was in one of the episodes, it was a side joke, side gag, where Jesus came back in a John Wick style character. Yes, yeah, yeah. He Bible 2, the, the, the Reckoning or some shit like yeah. that. It's like, time to kill, and he pops sunglasses down, he's, and the, like the next like 20 seconds is just him shooting people and kicking their asses. I, I love it when he's at the bar and... The bartender is God. <laughs> That's the ones I love the most, but I do remember the one you're talking about. Yeah, too. Like, it's time to get. He's like, Dad, we gotta do it. He's like, Oh shit, son! <laughs> like, interrupts God hitting on a random chick at the bar. Like, oh shit! Oh, I love the ones where like like there was the one where um, I think he turned he, he touched the chick like took her hand or something and turned all the blood in her body into wine and she passes <laughs> out. <laughs> Like, oh shit, not again. Dad, let's go. And he got- <laughs> yes. Dad's like, damn it, let's go. Oh shit. They look around and they all run out the back door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I love it when they do that kind of silly shit. Yeah, oh yeah. But what were some things that you saw? Because like I said, I didn't watch it. Mm-hmm. So let's talk some more about some things that you watched that were like, yeah. From cool. anything. Oh, I'll go I'll still because it's quick, Microsoft. Um they revealed the trailer for George R. R. Martin mixed square. Oh yeah, the uh from software from soft yes, GRM game. Yeah. Um like it's cinematic y, it's weird looking, it's what you'd expect. There's nothing. We know yeah. nothing. It's uh Soulsborne characters with uh George R. R. Martin skin, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um they showed it kind of I don't know why. Ninja Theory is making a overwatch style game which literally was hilarious because in any coverage i saw for it yeah laughably no one could stop not calling it overwatch or comparing it to overwatch because exactly what it is are you talking it's about a the, character uh, are you talking about the overwatch melee game yeah, yeah. it's a character based um squad sh- game yeah it doesn't matter if it's not a shooter yeah they even the, the funniest interview i saw was uh yahtzee from escapist who yeah. does great fucking reviews for games right he went there he was probably forced to go to the microsoft conference uh or well paid and he did an interview with a guy and he's kind of like oh so there's no shooting in it and he's like well there are some shooting so it's just like overwatch <laughs> like he just just pretty much subtly like nagging the guy <laughs> comparing yes. it to overwatch i mean that's basically what it is like it looks cool i mean, it doesn't it looks it looks like a game that's just going to be utter, utterly forgotten incredibly quickly because there's only like it, it doesn't even look like they have a lot of characters like no. uh, that other what was that other game that um fucking somebody put out it was an overwatch clone whatever yes. the fuck it was, it was oh, bad. Um... but it had forty thousand characters it what? was Gearbox. Gearbox did it. 
Oh, uh, oh my God! The, the game where the, where where Randy and Pitcher tried to get somebody to make porn of it. Oh no, my God! No, he said, "Oh my God, there's porn of this game. Look at it." Yeah. Trying to get people to like talk about the game. Yeah. Even though no one was talking about the oh game. Oh my God! Yeah, their squad base shooter. Oh man. Because Randy oh. Pitcher is pretty goddamn pathetic. Yeah. Uh, was... Don't don't talk about him too much. You might have a hard on for oh, him. Oh, I know. I mean, he might uh he, he might get angry and mock me. He might shove me. Oh no. <laughs> He might show you his uh, uh, bestiality porn or whatever the fuck he had. Uh, um, possibly, uh, possibly his child kitty porn. porn yeah, yeah. That's, oh, he's God. a fucking piece of shit. Oh, um, for magic, he was learning a magic trick. Trick from it wasn't for porn. He needed it for a magic trick, in just carrying around a jump drive of porn. Left it in a restaurant. Yeah, CEO I, of a company. I, everybody, I don't, I don't buy that. Uh, um, obviously, uh, like. Just fucking nothing. Like I said already, Double Fine, they bought that, which is interesting. Right. And they did announce the next console dates and stuff when that's coming out. Which, Date for Halo. I mean, okay. It's going to have Halo as a launch title, which is smart. About fucking time they do a good launch title. It's, it's like it's like when it, it would be like a Nintendo launching a new Nintendo console. With no Mario, or Zelda, Zelda, or It's like, let's launch a new part. Nintendo console and the launch title like is going to be Poyo Poyo Tetris. Fucking the Wii U. Or like, let's launch a new console, and by the way, the launch game, it's going to be a Fire Emblem, which is fine, except it's not a Fire Emblem made by Intelligent Systems, <laughs> it's a Fire Emblem made by some no-name company. I'm almost positive remember. that was literally the launch of the Wii U, it was no, nothing, none of the big name Nintendo car- Dude, like, I, character I don't, games. Dude, listen, I don't even remember it was the terrible. Wii U. It was fucking awful. I, I don't remember the Wii U. Had like you know one, what I remember from like the Wii U? Six games when you brought yours over here, we all party. played Smash and kicked the shit it's out the of Ron. the only reason to play it was to play Smash. But uh, yeah, Minecraft is getting a dungeon. I am I actually like the look of that. I, I love that type of game. Yeah. I have no intention of playing this one because it's fucking Minecraft. Um, if the price is right, I might literally and buy it. I'm sorry, I don't care, but there's, I might buy it. it. It just doesn't... It does. There's somebody else is making another one. Um, that actually looks good, hopefully is good, or there's one that maybe this was the Warhammer. I don't know, like like one that came out recently, but yeah, I I love that type of game, but yeah, no. Fucking I think Minecraft. for me, I've had enough time to like kind of separate myself from Minecraft, that I'm more indifferent to it. I just don't care about it anymore, right? And it it seems like a really obvious money grab. Um, so I'm like, eh, I don't, I, I, think I don't want to, I think for me, it depends on the pricing. If the pricing is just right, I might buy it. Like I, I would never buy or play like the core Minecraft game. I would never buy or play the side games like, um, Minecraft story mode or whatever by Telltale. Yeah. But, um, this, this to game me seems very easily that that's going to end up as one of those it's yeah. very, very, same enemies all the time very generic I mean, it, and it looks less like um boulder's gate and more like um uh what was that one that the quarter muncher um quarter muncher yeah the uh red uh, the human warrior needs food badly i have no um, idea no I, i'm sorry i i don't know this it's like it's always on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember the name of it. But my the ones I like like this are like Neverwinter Nights and Boulder's Gate. Yeah. Um, um Dark Alliance and things like that. Oh, don't we get a new Boulder's Gate game? There is. Yeah, I don't so remember if it was announced E three. No, it was not it was announced before E three. Yeah. Because um, it came out with the Stadia announcement during Google's conference. Yeah, which could be good. I know we're getting a Boulder's Gate classics thing too yeah, yeah. that's coming out. Um but yeah, I mean I that that sounds Sounds good to me. I liked it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I actually like the look of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like dungeon crawlers. I like roguelikes. And if it has procedurally generated dungeons. What is it? It's a, I can't remember the term for it. Uh, um, Asymmetric, maybe. What do you mean? I don't remember. There's a term for that kind of dungeon crawler. Uh, it, it's procedurally generated. No, no, no. Not that. Um, th- it's like third person, but not third person. It's isometric. Different. Isometric. There we go. Yeah. That's Diablo 3's isometric. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like they're all isometric. Yeah. Um, fuck Zelda's isometric. But um, I, I like I like these kinds of games. 
And like I said, I think with me, like the last time I played Minecraft, like it's 2019 now. So probably the last time I seriously sat down and played Minecraft was like 2016. Mm -hmm. And I it was playing with friends. And so I think for me, I've had a long enough time to be detached from Minecraft that I might play this game because it looks cool. And if it comes to PC or if it's like a way that I can play it or they drop it on Switch or something, I'll give it a shot. Maybe because it's Minecraft, it doesn't feel like a legit dungeon right. crawler game to right. me. I get you. And maybe you know they'll they'll you know surprise me and actually make it a real game. But at this point, it looks just like I said, like a cash grab. Like a that's just great. Like <laughs> this a, microphone really likes me. Yeah, um, it likes me. Other than that, one of the games that I, I was really excited to finally see was the Avengers game from Square. Oh, the Marvel... Oh, wait. The Avengers game from Square. Oh, yeah. I didn't know they were making so, an Avengers game. The only thing I'm aware of is uh, Black Alliance, which looks really Ultimate cool, Alliance. too. Well, is it Ultimate Alliance? It's Ultimate Alliance, Black... Whatever, that. Okay, well, whatever. Black... Uh, the Sons of Thanos. Sons and Daughters of Thanos. No, no, no. The one that's releasing on Switch. Is... Yes. The the Black... Black Hand. Black... No. I just saw it a second ago. It's, um... It's the name for their group. Black Order. Yeah. Yeah. Marvel Ultimate Alliance Black Order. Yeah, the Black Order. Yeah. That's what it is. I knew it had black in it because... Which, that also it confirmed that it's going to be a real Ultimate Alliance game. Yeah. I was worried when they first announced it because they only showed a few characters. In this trailer, they showed that, no, 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 we have all of the Marvel... Well, not all, but we have a shitload of Marvel characters. There's X-Men. There's just fucking... We have all of them, um, almost. Yeah, Ghost Rider. There's tons and tons of characters in there, which immediately makes me happy because I love... I love the Ultimate Alliance games up until the last one was okay. Ultimate Alliance 2. They, they, they almost went the way of uh, Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi Budokai, where, like, the first game had a bunch of characters. The second game had all the fucking characters you could ever want. <laughs> and then the third game had nothing. Yeah. It's, it was it, like, it was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? In the same vein, it's what they did with Marvel vs. Capcom, where the di because the Disney characters, the movie characters, are popular when they did Marvel, the last Marvel vs. Capcom, they cut the Marvel characters down to just the movie characters. Yeah. Uh, at least they probably might have had DLC for the other characters, but it was fucking stupid. Yeah. And they even cut down the amount of Capcom characters to make it even. Yeah. Which is garbage, because that fighting game lived on the fact that it had 90 billion characters. It was yeah. Like 37 for the fighting game, which was awesome. Yeah. And same thing with the last Ultimate Alliance. There was quite a few less, which was frustrating. Um, now... I mean, Looks it was like they're gonna have it. those. Those were basically the cash grabs. Like, if there was anything that could be sort a cash of a grab, cash grab, I would say was... that the cash grab because they're showing off the characters that are in the movies. And yes, want, that's, that's why that they brand, did it. Especially it's that brand for recognition. Alliance. Yeah. So, I like mean, for uh, Cap, for when they did that, with yeah. Capcom, it was so because it was right around that time Capcom was being really shitty with their on disc DLC that they were selling and <sighs> fuck them. Anyway, so I still kind of feel that way. Um, fuck Capcom. <laughs> Capcom, they've they they've done a lot to get goodwill. They're one of the few companies that I think that kind of has earned more. Like um, Resident Evil Seven, they released a bunch of DLC for free, just right. extra stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've done they've done stuff to make me like not not be as frustrated, not as not as much shitty things. But uh, then they did a ton of shitty things with the last Street Fighter. So if I ignore fighting games, Capcom's an okay company. <laughs> Because I don't like fighting games, I can do that. Um, yeah, like, I, I get that. Um, but Square is coming out with a Avengers game. Like, a real um, story-driven game that you can play four-player co-op. Uh, so Couch co-op? Yeah. Oh. Uh, they, I believe they said couch co-op or online. Uh, but I mean, it's the same where you're playing the same mission cooperatively, or you can play single-player as Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Hulk black widow um and that's what they have so far but at the press oh, conference shit. the end of the trailer they show a clip that shows ant-man except he's not in an ant-man suit he's hank pym using a gun that shrinks a thing but i'm uh, assuming that he's gonna have ant-man but <laughs> okay it looks awesome however it looks people have been calling it the that the, like one of the jokes i saw was that uh you, they didn't get the actors they got their stunt doubles <laughs> so it's like rory stank yeah no and... I, I um i saw i saw the meme i, yeah. I, I saw a meme where uh they took that screenshot 
and they added to the bottom this the uh, part from uh, Spider Man Homecoming or whatever it was. Yeah. It was like, hey, you guys aren't the real Avengers because <laughs> the Spider Man just yes. sitting there, he's just attacking the guys in the uh, fucking thing. Yeah, it's it, it it is quite a bit like that where they're like. It's obviously not the movie characters because that would have been a lot of money. Yeah. Would have been, you know, impossible. Awesome. But, you know, that's not that's not what they did. No, no. I mean, I'm sure they could have. But, yeah, I get it. I get it because, you know, someone also made that joke was like, all right, guys, we want to use your likenesses. OK, we'll take five hundred seventy four million dollars. Eh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you get their stunt doubles. Like you yeah, said. you get their stunt doubles. Which basically. reminds me of the scene from uh, Spaceballs where they go to capture <laughs> That's them. That's the meme that they, they – you didn't get them. You got their stunt doubles. Yes. And, like, I love that in that one the princess is some dude that's bald with long hair and a fucking beard. Like, just poof. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's such a good movie. But, yeah, the, the game – Brooks is genius, man. The game looks awesome. Yeah. Um – like, See, I I miss Square's thing. So it's definitely it's definitely a trailer worth watching. Square, sh- like nothing I cared about. Everyone's right. if you like JRPGs, obviously Square's conference was amazing because they showed a ton of them. Uh, they did show uh, the there's a zombie game that they showed that was really cool. That yeah. I, it's a sequel to one I played. Uh, but other than those two, I like I couldn't give a shit. I yeah. don't like yeah. Final Fantasy 7 people went nuts for I was like eh, not I'm not going to play it. I don't care. Yeah, you I know. mean I kind of don't either and like I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy games and JRPGs in general and I love Final Fantasy 7. Like I do. It's it's one of those games that like was cemented in my growing up and that childhood and I still can sit there and say it's an overrated cliche filled piece of trash but it's my piece of trash i love that piece of trash i'm going to keep it and hold it um but with it being like a ps4 or ps5 exclusive or whatever the fuck it's going to end up being it being also episodic i i don't care yeah that's like like those are things that those are ideas that kind of just turn me off i guess i i don't know it's i I wanted to play it though I really do because it's Final Fantasy and I love the character redesigns the character redesigns are fantastic yeah it looks amazing it does I I can't yeah I don't have anything bad to say about it I know there's a lot of people that I've talked to that have like gone back to play it you know before this one comes out and they're like god I forgot how bad that story was or just how convoluted and like how how just crazy huge it was and stuff I mean it's that typical anime protagonist story where like you got big swords and everyone does emo it's, shit. It's and, the Final Fantasy style. It's JRPG. It is yeah. the quintessential uh, JRPG type yeah. of story. Um, Massive, huge game. Yep. That's why they're bringing it into parts, apparently. I mean, and that's that's okay, I guess. That's fine. I mean, it is a huge game. Like, the first disc, if you want to do everything you possibly can on that first disc, can take upwards of 50 hours. Yeah. Like, you can get through to, to the second disc in like 20, 10, whatever but the game can be massive. There's a lot of shit to do. So yeah, I get that. But um, eh, what's um, by the way, Dying Light was the zombie game I was trying to think of. Uh, the the okay. sequel. It was already announced. They showed a trailer at some conference. I don't remember what. They showed a trailer that was exactly a trailer they had already shown last year yeah. with a couple new parts that was pretty bad. That they, they, it was kind of like pathetic that they just showed that. But they uh, there was another trailer showed at somebody's conference that was still really cool. Or at least I hadn't seen the old trailer, if that was the case. Because I enjoyed everything I saw. Is that what Dying Light? What is that? It's made so I after... I mean, it sounds familiar. After the... Um, there was a, a Dead Island came out. Yes. The team split. And a bunch like the head developer and then a bunch of those the, the developers went off to, to start their own studio because they didn't like what the publisher was making them do with Dying Light 2. Uh-huh. Something something happened that they left, started their own uh, developer, and they developed this game. It's the first person zombie survival game where there's lots of parkour. You run around the whole city 
uh, jumping over obstacles and things. Right, right. And uh, there's sort of a cra- there's a crafting system, but it's not as much as it was in Dead Island, thankfully, because right. God, I fucking hate crafting at this point. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I mean that's 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 probably why I hate Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I'm done. I'm just done with crafting, and I'm doing it right now, playing Metro Exodus on the from Game Pass, and I'm already like, oh my God, I fucking hate crafting, but. In this game, this game, Dying Light was awesome. Yeah, At right. night, the zombies get more e- yeah. like powerful, and these super zombies that are super fast can like keep up with you and parkour and like do different things. Like they're, they're legitimately horrifying. Like yeah. when I played it for like the first ten hours or, or five hours, however long, I don't know. I played it before I got really good weapons and items. I would not go out at night unless I had an objective that I went straight to, found a safe place, and hid there like a little bitch <laughs> until daytime. Because these things are scream super loud. They're legitimately like one of the few enemies in a video game that I found in, like intimidating and frightening. Right. Because they're they took a shitload of hits to kill, and they could fuck you up really easily and like surround you and stuff and. It was it, it was uh, it was interesting, and they'd have parts where you'd end up exploring like a tunnel, like a, a a subway that you had to go through and try and avoid these things and get out as quickly as possible. So I, I don't think I ever played really Dying Light. It sounds like a combination of Mirror's Edge and Left 4 Dead. They it, it came out this the game was awesome. It had a multiplayer mode that was popular and stuff. Right. And I know they added a lot of DLC to it. Um, at first, most of it was multiplayer, but I think they added more single player DLC. I just, even though I, I don't remember if it had a season pass or if it was free. I know I have the DLC, but I never went back and played any of it. Right. In fact, it's on my list of games that I told just not update on Steam, <laughs> but I still have it un, un, uninstalled it. But I just, I never, I don't go back and play it after I, I played the shit out of it before I put. I don't know. I put a lot of hours into it, nineteen that, or twenty hours. That reminds me that Skyrim updated. Without oh my god, I had fifty three hours in that game. I played um, it a lot. Skyrim updated without me letting it, so I'm kind of upset. No, that's weird. Yeah, like uh, Steam just said, "Fuck you." He's just taking anyway. Todd said no. Todd said it, it has to be updated, updated. which was so, oh terrible because now I have to redo all my mods. Not that I've been playing it anyway. I don't fuck care, yeah. but that's the that's one of the things that keeps me from playing that and Fallout Four. Because sometimes I'm like, man, I you know I kind of want to go explore the wasteland in Fallout Four. Yeah, and then I'm like, ah, I'd have to spend forty minutes updating all my mods and finding out which ones don't work anymore. And uh, never mind, I'll play something else. Yeah, see, that's one of my big things with, with Skyrim, especially because you know, like a lot of the mods I use rely on SKSE, and SKSE yeah. has to be updated every single fucking time they update the executable. Mm-hmm. And they update the executable every fucking time they update because they have to. Cr- I don't. I don't even know. They don't have a good enough reason to. But it's just. It's just frustrating. Oh god. Uh, so let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you wouldn't have seen that was pretty big. And I'm probably missing a bunch of stuff. Well, I know I'm gonna go back and watch Devolver Digital. I gotta just watch be- theirs too. Just theirs because watch. Um, Bethesda's was pathetic. Bethesda, like I said, showed jack shit. Uh, although the Doom Eternal stuff looks fucking, oh god, I, I got I gotta go watch that trailer and um, like, so good. Like what I've seen of it, which is bits and pieces of it, um, have made me start playing Doom again because I got mm. I still haven't completed that game. I've had like three fucking years now. I love <laughs> you the game. own it on both the Switch and the PC. I own it on two separate platforms that I can very easily play it on. And for like, pardon me, when it first came out, I played so much more of it than any of you any of my friends including you and i got so deep into it and then i just stopped playing and it's like i don't know why i i I know why i stopped playing i got to the temple yeah and i got swarmed by like cyber or not cyber um by fucking cacodemons and it killed me and for some reason that just discouraged me despite the fact that i had died like 30 goddamn times anyway yeah but uh before even getting out the first level but you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I never went back to it. And then um, I saw at some point. And me, I fucking went all in on that game and didn't put it down until I beat it. Well, at some point, though, I lost my save file. Oh, yeah, that'll kill. That, that's what that's what yeah. really did it. I don't know what happened. I don't know where it would have gone. Um, but at some point, uh, either I uninstalled Doom to make room for something else because I hadn't really been playing it. Or something, and I lost my save file, and so that just is like, well, now I just don't want to fucking play. Yeah. 
I so, happened to me in a lot of games. But you know, you know, I was sitting there telling you where secrets were. Oh yeah, you go over here and you go down and you drop because I was sitting there like meticulously combing over the entire fucking like every well, level. It w- I remember it because you were like one or two levels ahead of me and I would missed something in like the fucking second level. Yeah. And was pissed, so I went back and played it all the way through and getting everything. Yeah. And then got to where you were, and then we kind of were dead you know about even for a little while and then you stopped playing and i was like i just fucking did you forget to this fight no. how awesome and you're just like i got to uh, the, no i, I, I got to the kazadul temple or whatever the fuck the name was and got swarmed by cacodemons and they killed me and i just said fuck it there's the i love the upgrade system in that game oh yeah the uh when you go and do the little challenge things the rune challenges yes oh my which god are totally worth it to rune do trials. every single they're still so fucking good I love that way of upgrading your uh, up getting you know upgrades that are almost like cheats, and getting one that essentially made me invulnerable and have infinite ammo. I think. Yeah, there's one where uh, there's a room where if you have above a certain amount of armor, you just have unlimited ammo. That's it. Yeah, and there's and something so... where if you stand still and shoot. I can't remember. There's two two things combined, or maybe it was just that one. But I know I would use the minigun in that mode where you stand the turret, turret, the turret, turret into yeah. a turret, yeah, and just annihilate everything. Oh, I think I, I think I was getting armor. I yeah, was there, gaining armor okay. while I so, got killed. So there was a there there was a rune where when you make a glory kill, it the uh, they drop like normally they drop armor and health yeah. or no, not armor, uh, health and occasionally ammo. There's also one where when you get a glory kill, they drop armor. Mm-hmm. So you can so you sit there, you get some argent cells, you max your armor out, and then you just get this rune and you keep your armor above 200, and you have unlimited ammo for all your weapons. Yeah. So you sit there and you switch to something complete, except for the BFG, but the BFG is a special exception. It's a special item, yeah. Um. So you sit there and um, you you sit there. You get like like you said the chain gun, put it in mobile turret mode, or you sit there and you get the uh, Gauss cannon, put it in siege mode, and just sit there and annihilate everything because you don't have to worry about running out of ammo. Uh, so it's like God, oh man, so much fun. Yeah, uh, dude, that that I, I I'm playing through it again, and I'm playing it on my PC versus my Switch, even though I'm further along on my Switch, just because I want that frame rate. And yeah, uh, oh yeah, and. I'm just I'm loving it again. Like I'm reminded of how amazing it is. And like prior to playing this, I've been playing a lot of regular Doom, but with the Project Brutality add-on, which so makes you got the all game the new stuff. makes the game way harder, makes the enemies way more intelligent, makes the weapons more oomphy, mm-hmm. and it's way more action-packed than, than vanilla Doom is. And so I've been playing that. So I'm like, like, and I will always say that that game mode, that and uh, Brutal Doom and all that, are way more difficult than Doom 2016. So I'm tempered in the fires of hell, and I'm coming into this like fuck you guys, and I'm just killing things so much more easily than I did the first time I played through or any subsequent times I've played through because yeah. I'm used to it being really hard. Yeah, and I'm like, this is fucking easy. Like the level where they first introduce you to the berserk power up, and you're just ripping things apart. Yeah, I remember when I first played that, I died like a bunch of times trying to use the berserk pack. And uh, now I get the Berserk power up. I'm just rip your head off, rip your head off, rip your head off. And I'll look at my health like I've lost nine health in that whole exchange. Whereas just two years ago, I would have lost all of my health at least twice. Yeah. There was something with that power. Like I I had the I, I didn't couldn't tell the power ups apart at first. So for me, I would see a power up in a room and clear the entire room and then grab it. And realize, oh, this is a fucking berserk power up after. Or it's like quad like damage or something. Yeah, and I'd be like, God damn it, because <laughs> I thought it was like a health power up or something. Yeah, I remember doing that like two or three times. It's like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. God, that game was great. Um, I'm trying. To... There's not much that I can remember from the other conferences that stood out to me. Uh, they oh, they added dragons to Elder Scroll Online. They they stressed the shit out of that. And they're putting that fucking god awful blades game on the Switch. Fuck them. I don't want to talk like, about them no more. The Blades game is <laughs> cool. Like, um it, it's cool. Like I'm just gonna I'll go ahead and say that. Until you get to the uh I think the concept. The is concept cool. is really cool. That's what I'm yeah, the, the concept is really cool. Execution is terrible. Their execution is is completely awful. Um it's just it's like And then the fucking chests and the pay to wait 
Like, like if you turn your phone like in landscape mode, it, it plays like a normal Elder Scrolls RPG. Yeah. And it's actually really kind of cool. Um, but then you get to that point where you have to wait six hours to open a chest. Or you've got to wait six hours you for something them. to build. It's like it's just so fucking dumb. It, it's basically like Skyrim, but with uh, city building elements. So it's kind of like Dark Cloud meets. Uh, so it's not Elder like Scrolls. Skyrim. It's it's something completely. Well, it's no, not no, a no, full no, no, Elder no, no, no. Scrolls game. Like, it's not they, a full Elder Scrolls game. What I'm saying is, it's like Skyrim because it has Skyrim graphics and Skyrim combat like stuff. But then it, it, it has throws the in elements, some of the elements of an Elder Scrolls game. But then it throws in like the city building and the opening the chest thing and stuff like that. Shit that just Which like, all be. right, if you've ever played Dark Cloud, you know that those two elements together can be amazing, right? Like Dark Cloud was a game on the PS2, which you played as a character who was trying to build cities. And you had to go into a dungeon that was nearby and all the dungeons were procedurally generated the first time you entered. And it was really fucking cool. You go through this dungeon, you get stuff, you get power-ups, you find chests, you get pieces of the town and village and all that. And then you get to the end of the dungeon, you kill the boss, and you get the final piece, and everything's cool when you rebuild the city. And it's like that, except shitty. (laughs) Except terrible. Because, like, Dark Cloud was an amazing, brilliant concept in my eyes. Like, I love Dark Cloud. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And it's one of those things that I still regularly sort of kind of emulate whenever i think about it um but it, it's just it's it's like they took that put the elder scrolls paint on it and then made everything pay to win yeah unless you like waiting 60 hours to open a bunch of chests to get just for the chance to get good to armor. get something yeah to get like something you need to rebuild the city or like some money or uh, armor or a legendary weapon or some dumb shit like that yeah it's fucking terrible fuck them um I, I hate it. I, it. It's one of those things that's wait to play, is yeah. what it's called. Wait to play. Whatever the fuck Jim, term Jim Sterling has given it. It's just garbage. Yeah, wait to play. All it's just Which is what it is. You're through. waiting to be able to play it. Yeah, or pay money and then you can play it now. Yeah. Um, Stupid as Which, all right, those concepts I'm not completely against. Like, I'm really not. Like, I, I, I get If it. you're going to call yourself a video game, I am. Um, because you've, you've ruined everything that... Well, I'm not. I mean, I, I never said I agreed with them. Oh. I just said I'm, I'm not against them necessarily. Like there are game games I've played in the past where the the waiting mechanic wasn't the worst. And so when you when you put in a waiting mechanic, you got to you got to market your game as a casual game, where they're not trying to market Blades as a casual game. They're trying to market yes. Blades as an action game. It's fucking not. It's it's not. Um, Travian is a casual RTS browser game. They don't try to build themselves anything different. They do have some pay to pay to win mechanics, but that's the way they've always been, and they've never tried to build themselves as anything different. You're trying to build this as like an action, an, a, a full Elder Scrolls experience, motherfucker. I didn't play Skyrim and have to wait 18 hours to open the boss chest. Exactly. I opened it right away and got Meridia's beacon, and some bitch started yelling at me from the sky. Like that's how it works. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. It's just dumb. It's frustrating as hell. Yeah. To, to sit there and listen to him spew bile out of his face. Like, shut the fuck up, Todd. Yeah. He's quickly becoming almost like uh, Peter Molyneux or... Uh, Easily, yeah. Yeah. Like some other similar idiot who I can't think of right now. Uh, fucker from um, Gearbox. <laughs> oh, Randy Pitchford. Randy Pitchford. They're all just... It's funny that the faces... Those faces are just <laughs> essentially hated. Just... Ugh. I, like, I used to defend Bethesda. Um... I used to defend their games because I like to Morrowind. an extent. It's Morrowind funny that Fallout was... 76 even just it, it, it showcased so much of the bad that they've been excused for. Yeah. That, you know, without that little bit of pain of the decent story and things like that, that kind of covered it. it and then everyone's like, oh, my God, it's just it made everything else worse. This is this is this is what this we've is been... what you guys do. Oh, yeah. And like that's the thing they've been doing. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that have already hated them for a long, long time, and it took and hated every Elder Scrolls since Morrowind, and hated it took every us a long Fallout time. since the, the, before they became first-person shooters. You know, the only problem I've had with Morrowind is the D and D elements that they they so shoved in there, mm-hmm. like your chance to actually miss something. You know, like like <laughs> if I'm this far from something. I'm going to hit it, right? <laughs> I mean, I would like that or so, I guess armor and things taken into account, but yeah, I don't know. 
I like like if I have a crossbow in my hand and I'm four inches from a thing that is taking up my entire view and I pull the trigger on my crossbow, I'm gonna hit it. Yeah. <laughs> there is no I shouldn't there miss. Is no, I, I, there is no I'm gonna roll a one and miss. Like no. I'm four feet away from this. It is all I can see besides the crossbow in front of me. If I pull this trigger right now, I'm gonna hit it and you can miss. Yeah. Like <laughs> what? I don't get it. That, that, that's really the only thing. Oh, and speaking of D&D, mm-hmm. um, and I know I sent this in the chat yesterday, but I wanted to go ahead and throw this out there. Do you guys know that uh, the original Doom used dice rolls to determine weapon damage? Yeah, I saw that. Like, uh, it's kind of interesting. I think the uh, one of the weapons uses like 78s to determine the damage. Um, the shotgun is like f- uh, so many D10s plus a certain amount of damage. Like it can do a maximum of 135 damage. It's probably because it was easier the, to code that way than yeah, otherwise. I, I, I would imagine. So. Or they already had something from like. It could have been that they adopted Doom from a, a an unknown TTRPG. You know who knows? Yeah, or they just knew how to code that. Yeah, that type I of, mean, uh, okay, something like RPG. that. Something like that wouldn't uh, I think be too difficult. Uh, it's just a bunch of random number yeah. uh, random number generators that you give a range to, mm-hmm. and then you add it all together. Like even not even my dumbass could do that. So I that's mean, funny. But yeah, I, I was sitting there reading that because uh, there are websites, of course, that are out there dedicated to that kind of thing. And yeah, just people that figured out. Oh yeah, no, they use they used to because you look in the source code, you can see. Oh look, it uses see all the nifty things they've done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you watched Nintendo's. Right? I did yes. watch Nintendo's. I missed the first Nintendo's eight minutes. I did miss the first good. eight minutes. So there were some things I didn't get because YouTube was supposed to notify me, and I looked at my watch. <laughs> It's like 12.08, like, oh, shit, the Nintendo Direct is going, and then I get on there, and new YouTube pops up with the notification. Like, <laughs> fucking thanks, YouTube. You should have told me eight minutes ago, you I mean, dicks. I don't remember. I watched I, – I didn't watch the whole thing live. I watched the end of it live when you, no, you when were I said like, something, hey, yeah. something, it's on. Yeah. Um, I went back and watched the whole thing. Or, well, more of a listen, kind of watch, listen to it when I was yeah, on yeah, yeah. lunch at work, but I was driving for part of it. Um, so I, I, but I don't remember the first eight minutes. I, I, I the, the, the key minutes. things were they showed Ultimate Alliance, which yeah, I love seeing which that. Is looking awesome, you know. Um, they I, showed I, Animal dude, Crossing. I, I was already going to buy it because I liked it. It looked yeah. really good, but what they were showing before. Now I'm going to buy it just because I know I can play as Miles Morales. Yeah. Who is one of my favorite Spider Man? Spider, Spider Man? Spider Man's. Spider Man's. He's one of my favorite Spider Man versions of Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, I, I fucking, I'm down. I can't wait to play it co-op. Yeah. Oh that's, yeah. That's something always been fun for those games. Um, Animal Crossing, which man, I, I don't care about Animal Crossing. Like, and I'm not gonna down it though, because I know there are tons of people who did. Yeah. I know there are tons of people I like. I personally know who I have massive respect for. I love you guys. Don't hate me. Um, I love somebody's was like a couple people I was listening to were like, I can't wait to play that game endlessly for a month and then never touch it again (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah um no it looks good though like i'm glad that we're finally getting another animal crossing game because i know there are tons of fan tons yeah oh yeah people have been um, clamoring for it like that animal crossing game is to animal crossing fans what the metroid prime 4 is to us metroid fans yeah like it's what we want that and you know um arlo on youtube did a video of games he would like to see that were on the 3ds get a switch hd remake yeah one of those things he said was metroid metroid 2 even though it's only been like a few years i would love like an upgrade to that game on on the switch to take advantage of the much superior switch controls yeah so yeah i could see that it'd be nice um but yeah i'm glad that the animal they didn't show any metroid prime no they didn't disappointed they they did not that that uh, got delayed which i mean i'm okay with that though because they were redoing it basically but i they didn't like what bandai namco had done so they said fuck it scrapped the whole thing and went to retro studios like do it yeah and retro studios like fuck yeah let's do this yeah we're gonna do this you fucking bitch Um, you bet your sweet bippy we will (laughs) Link's Awakening looks good. I, I don't like the graphics. You're not though. a fan. Of, I, I really like that it I'm, looks like a combination between little toys and claymation. Yeah. I love that I, for I, some reason. I Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. I, mm-hmm. I'm openly admit, 100% admitting it's completely my fault that I don't like it um, because they subverted my expectations. I... And I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the, because of how much I love the game in general. Maybe it's just because of how successful it was. I was hoping for a, a cross between Breath of the Wild's art style and maybe Wind Waker's art style. And what I got was uh, Toy Story 
on meth. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. That, that I think that's my problem. So it's completely my fault. That being said, it's still a Zelda game. It's a reimagining of one of my absolute favorite Zelda games of all time, The Ballad of the Windfish. I still walk around whistling it every now and then because I have it fully memorized. Um. I, I remember, oh my god, I killed so many sets of batteries in my Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, Game Boy what the fuck ever, playing that game. <laughs> like, that was it one was, of those games. That's one ridiculous. of those Zelda games I just played over and over and over again. Um, just so many times. Yeah. Like, I, I remember g- going into the shop and stealing the shovel. Like, because you could do that. You could sit there and make the shopkeeper turn his back to the counter, walk up, grab the shovel, walk out. <laughs> That's and then when thievery and, in a Zelda game, and then like you go and anytime you check a uh, like a sh- like a cabinet or a dresser or something, you get called thief instead of Link or whatever you put your name in as. And if you go back to the shop after you steal from him, uh-huh. he kills you. Yeah, like, like it instantly kills you? you. You walk in like you didn't think you could get away with this, and he hits you with lightning and you die. What the fuck? Yes. Yes. So I'm really hoping that mechanic is in this game. I just want it to be a thing. Another thing that you could do, though, uh, because, like, the bow in the game, you had to buy it from the shop. Yeah. Because it was uh, an optional uh, thing. You didn't need it. At least I don't remember necessarily needing it. Mm -hmm. It was 980 rupees, the most expensive item in the game. And what you could do is, once you got up the rupees, which was very easy to do uh, with the crane game just south of where the shop is, if you knew where to put the crane, you could get the 60 rupees every time and build it up in like half an hour, 45 minutes. What you could do is, and I love doing this, um, <clears throat> buy the bow, and then as soon as you can, hit all the buttons, hit save and quit and come back in. Wherever you saved and quit, that's where your rupees would remain. <laughs> nice. So like, you could sit there, spend like three or 400 instead of the full 980 if yeah. you were fast enough. So that's one of those things, like, I have a lot of fond memories of Link's Awakening. Yeah, lots of little tricks and things for it. I just remember when I played it, I played it at somebody else's house. Couldn't, it didn't own it, so I played for, like, the three days I was there. If I wasn't doing something else, was deer hunting was what we were there for. Right. I played it literally all night long. Right. And, you know, would be passed out in the fucking woods when I was supposed to be hunting. Or fell asleep while getting my hair cut, like, three or four times. I was so damn tired. Every time we got in the car, I passed out almost immediately. It was funny. Yeah, that game that game was awesome, and I always wanted to play through it, so see, I'm glad um, to see it coming. I had two copies of that game mm. because we had the original Game Boy copy, and then my father later bought mm-hmm. the DX copy, which was from the Game the Boy DX Color. Copy, yeah. yeah, It was the black cartridge. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. really fun cool. And uh, so we had two copies of the game, so I would have had it here. You can borrow this. I remember. Actually, I might have had three or even four copies of that game at some point. I remember holding, a, being at Toys R Us, going to buy uh, a Game Boy game, holding the DX copy in my hand, and it was before I had played it, and holding, I want to say Mario and the Six Golden Coins. Yeah. And I got Mario instead of uh, that, which I was mean, still an awesome game. But yeah, still at the game. time, I, I didn't know how good, because I was. I had played Ocarina of Time at that point. I had played Ocarina of Time because I remember thinking, how are you going to turn that into a Game Boy game? Because yeah. I had no, I had played, you had no concept. I had no the concept that Zelda, Zelda started as, you know, that 2D, top down, top 2D down, down isometric thing, so. shit. Yeah. So well, I put it back. It's just and top down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I get you. Yeah. But yeah, still great game. Can't wait to play it. Um, Oh There's, yeah, no, I, I am I am one hundred percent looking forward to it. I'm trying to think of other I, games. I total they Zelda trash. Um, I mean, they sold off two new Smash characters. Um, well, that yeah, at the end the, we got two. Oh, well, that was the, the first thing. At the beginning, the very beginning, they showed yeah. off the the, the all Dragon the Quest Dragon hero Quest characters. The Dragon Quest hero, like the the gener- the general yeah. hero character, is coming to Smash. Which, which I'm which assuming cool. his different costumes are the different Dragon Quest characters. I'm yeah, I'm assuming it's going to be ec- like yeah. costumes. Yeah, not, not Echo Fighters. Not Echo Fighters. No, but it's going to be one of those things where each costume has its own set of skills. Has some different abilities. Yeah, slightly stuff. different attacks and abilities and stuff. Yeah, or at least different name stuff. I don't know. It didn't really. They didn't clarify. I mean, will that be an echo? I'm fighter sitting there and I'm looking. When I was watching it, because I did go back and rewatch. They it. show him do a different thing. Yeah. Um. Know. There, there was definitely like uh, when they were showing off the characters, each one seemed to be its own sort of thing. Where like maybe it had its own. Maybe they won't do them as echo, but they're doing instead of doing an echo fighter, it is the uh, the different. Well, I think it's more like uh like with Cooper Junior, 
you can switch between the characters' costumes, yeah. and all his costumes are the different Koopa kids. Yeah. And each Koopa kid has their own set of moves. Oh, oh! I never noticed that. Yeah, like each Koopa kid is a little bit different. They oh. they do different things for the different attacks. But they all generally the same. I I don't know. I just know they do different. I'm assuming. Like I've never I've the never played them. I've, I've just played a I've, I've played them, against them. Like and like they're all a little bit different. They all move differently. They all have uh, different attacks for their smash attacks and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. I'll go. I, I'm do some research and figure it out. But uh, either way, that's kind of cool. And then yeah. the big reveal was fucking Banjo Kazooie, which as soon, which you might not give a shit. That is major for me because that's like, like, one of my favorite, listen, listen, favorite in sixty four Banjo Kazooie sixty four Banjo two like that that original game. Yeah, I loved it. I fucking so did. Good. It's such a the sequel was even better. It's like it's like Mario. It's like Mario 64, but yeah. better. Yeah. But so much better. Like, it really is. i fucking completely on board with it. And then the next one was great, too. I loved the next one. I loved a lot of how it changed things. It took what the first one did it well and did it more, better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then after that, I stopped caring about Banjo. Because they, because they didn't make another one until just, Nuts and just, Bolts, and just, Nuts and Bolts was They just garbage. fucking dropped off the map. And then, like you said, Nuts and Bolts or whatever the yeah. fuck it was was terrible. Which this has nothing to do with Nuts and Bolts, which makes me so fucking happy. It's just um, like someone oh, created a... I did like the Game Boy Advance game they had. They had like this, this top-down isometric... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quasi I never played it, but I remember it. Um, Banjo-Kazooie. It was, it was Banjo-Kazooie. It was more Banjo-Kazooie than the fucking nuts other... Nuts and Bolts. What, was it Nuts and Bolts? Was that the name of that? Because yeah. when you say Nuts and Bolts, I think Ratchet and Clank. Nope, it was Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, I, well, maybe it was... No, I'm pretty sure it was Nuts and Bolts. Either way. It was it, a fucking the third, crafting the third banjo goddamn Lego game. game. The thing was, that game's actual mechanic of making vehicles and stuff was great and actually really, really fun. But you it shouldn't correct. have been it fucking... It shouldn't have been a Banjo-Kazooie game. No. Because I want fucking it been Banjo-Kazooie. A, it should have been a side game with Banjo-Kazooie in it. You can, maybe like, not, like not, not Not like a side game of Banjo-Kazooie. What I'm saying is like a, like a like just another game that had Banjo-Kazooie as a character. Maybe, maybe like like, I, or you just don't, don't put Banjo Kazooie in it, and just have a. You could create another character. They make another mascot that would be awesome because that game had really really cool building mechanics. You could build some fucking awesome shit, dude. And then it was that terrible. game was released eleven years ago. There's an image I just saw uh, on our gaming that was a uh, Banjo Master Tui. Chief. Banjo Tui, that game yeah, I Banjo enjoyed Tui. that game. So Master Chief is there, and he's got a Smash Brothers invitation, and he hands it off to Banjo Kazooie. He's like, "Here, uh, I, you haven't had a game in a decade. I'm getting a new game next year. You deserve this." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's so great! I, I, I don't think I don't think in reality there was any chance of Master Chief being in Smash. No, but no. it's the it's just it was the same as Waluigi handing off the ticket to Daisy." <laughs> it's the same exact comic. Yeah, Banjo Kazooie Grunty's Revenge uh, was the it, Game Boy Advance. Was the Game Boy Advance game? And I liked it. I really did. Those um, games had so much heart. They really did. Like they were so fun. Good. That's and why I can't fucking wait. As soon as the in the was, fucking reveal, you see the goddamn puzzle piece bounce off, and they try. They did the little troll thing where it was fucking duck hunt dog with the fucking yeah the duck over his head. Yeah, but I was like, no, don't don't fool with me. They <laughs> Banjo. It, it, it it's like uh, I loved it. Ben Grunty's revenge is kind of like uh, how Chain of Memories connects the first Kingdom Hearts to the second Kingdom Hearts. Grunty's revenge connects Banjo Kazooie to Banjo Tooie, even though it was released later. Yeah. Um, it's kind of nice. Trying to think, I didn't know the needed connections, but I guess it kind of. Um, well, not how she not, comes back not, to life. Technically. How she comes back to life yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. During the game, Gruntilda oh God, transfers somebody... her spirit into the Menta, Mecha Grunty robot, travels back in time to prevent the first meeting of the two. Oh, okay. So and, it's not at all. That's um, a completely different story they added. Hold up. In the end, Gruntilda is trapped once more and tells Klungo to contact her sisters, thereby oh, setting the events of Banjo Tooie into motion. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking the the music, everything about the banjo kazooie. That's my that's one of the things Dude, I'm most excited their for. Their music is just is so play bright the level. and colorful and fun. So it's like good. it's like like I said, it, it's the like, sound effects, everything. It's like that Super was the Mario sixty four. It was Super Mario sixty four, but in those hands. platformers. Those those the perfect time for those kind of platformers. Yeah, like those were those the are those music, games the where they did three D platforming so, well. So that's where it got perfected. I think it's I I wouldn't even call it well. 
because there were still so many. Like, if playing those games now, it would be like, oh my god, so I mean, these controls I aren't good. Banjo Tooie holds up better. It it holds up okay. I don't know. I, I played it on rare the rare collection. Right. From, okay. Well. Okay. And it, let me let me restate um, again. Playing it's it on, time. Hold up. Let me play playing on an emulator. It holds up well. Maybe I don't know. I um, just know. At least I I maybe it's because that's the era of gaming I come from. But like if we were to fire it up out here on my Shield TV, I oh, well, take to it immediately. It's still my era of gaming too. Yeah. Like that was that I like those games way like like you said more than Mario sixty four. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, more don't than, get me wrong. More than Mario sixty four is fine, but it's just yeah. it's so just Mario. Although Donkey Kong sixty four was, was was a great. It was cr- they're all all four of those games is great. The fact that that one required the expansion pack kind of kind of like bummed me out but it didn't matter at the same time because we had like more expansion packs than we had nintendo 64 so it's fine those were worth some money too later on if we'd all known oh i know dude um but yeah it it was so fun so so very like those four megabyte cartridges that's all they are they're just they just have four megabytes of whatever ram that 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 system (laughs) used you can sell those for like 300 bucks these days um, if they're in good, decent working condition, it's amazing. The games like Banjo Kazooie made me question of why people liked Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, because Crash Bandicoot, even back then, the, the fucking controls were bad. The controls were they weren't awful. great. Oh my god, it was there, like, you couldn't. It wasn't really 3D. You had basically it, were on no, a set pad. No, it was full 3D. Like I can no, no. I mean, you. um, like it wasn't. Open. It wasn't open world. It wasn't open. That's what you. All, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, not not not. It wasn't 3D. It wasn't an open world. I was like, why? I don't. Why do I? I as and somebody, Crash was fun. Yeah. But it was so much more frustrating. As somebody who played both of them a lot, because yeah. I had a PlayStation, I had the Nintendo 64. Those were those were just a part, a step on my journey. Yeah. Whereas you start it with the Nintendo 64. Um, I, I can say Crash Bandicoot are they're they're a good series of games. I like them. I don't care enough about them to buy the Insane Trilogy. Yeah, I've I've never even been remotely interested in it. I, I like I said, I'm not bashing the games. They're fun games. I remember I have fond memories of playing them, sitting there with my mom, her and I, I mean, trying I, to beat the fucking levels and stuff. And those are warped, some. I had war. Well, I didn't own it, but I played the shit out of Warped. Yeah, it was, and they're not like I said, they're not bad, but it was going from Banjo, at least with the first Crash. I mean, yeah, I was like. like Eh, why? Yeah, yeah. Like once you once you get a taste of something better, which mm-hmm. I would definitely say that Banjo Kazooie was better than Crash Bandicoot in those regards. You don't care to go Banjo Tooie for sure. Oh, Banjo Tooie was great. Banjo Tooie had so fucking much to it. It's there, huge. there was like, like yeah, like I said, it took everything that Banjo Kazooie did. Well, which Banjo Kazooie had a lot of its own con, a lot of content in its own right. Yeah. And then you take that, and you go to Banjo Tooie, and it's like. Mm-hmm. everything explodes there's so much more to do and yet it's still the same basic game mm-hmm. so it's like yeah that was great um moving on yeah because uh, uh, we got banjo kazooie for smash Yay. and then Yay. there's a game that i'm interested in that i i don't uh, uh, hesitantly and i don't remember the name of it um it's uh, the game where you're like chained up to a uh, fucking demon thing are you talking about um Astral Chain? Yeah, Astral yeah. Chain. That game, I've heard from people that played early demo or like alpha stuff yeah. at press conferences that it does not play well. But I'm really interested. It kind of looks interesting. It kind of looks like it might be cool. But I don't know. Um, it's I mean, a it's game another... that they've been kind of hyping up. It's another Platinum Games game. So I mean, yeah, and I like Platinum Games. They make good stuff. They I made, mean... make, you know, Bayonetta and... Uh, fucking near automata which yeah which you know they tried to like the problem with near automata is that it's just not pc optimized and they want to fix it but square apparently won't give them the money to oh that sucks which makes sense because it's square <laughs> i might have to pick it up on another console and i i didn't have i mean there there that. are there are ways to fix it i had i i only played a couple hours but i wasn't having any problem with it when uh, i like it. apparently one of the biggest things with it are like resolution issues and stuff oh okay um apparently i if i were I, and i might be re- recalling this wrong um but apparently it does like resolutions beyond like 1600 by nine no so like anything above 900p it doesn't play well with uh, there are cinematic errors and stuff, but there are uh, fan-made mods and patches that fix it. Fix so, some of it, yeah. yeah. Um, one of those is uh, it's called the Far Mod. 
because you know it's called near automata yeah. so far my it's far yeah <laughs> and it fixes pretty much everything that's wrong with it yeah but platinum games so I, I i think i remember reading something a while back where they said we have we we can fix it um square just won't give us the money yeah to fix it because it's square because square published it for them so i don't know um <clears throat> but yeah I, I did watch the nintendo one uh I'm interested. Oh fuck! I completely forgot everything that I was going to talk about once we got to the Nintendo uh, E3. <laughs> um, Nintendo E3 announcements. Tell me, tell me, Google. Oh, uh, other than the one big one, the the sequel to uh, uh, no, Breath there, of the Wild at the end, were, just fucking other, blew me there away. Were, there were other things that I was caring about. Um, like The Witcher Three oh, is yeah, actually coming to Switch. To uh, dudes, after watching it. I care less about it though because it did. It takes a huge graphical hit. Um, I mean, yeah, the uh, CD Projekt Red's working with Saber Interactive to get it to work, so it's actually CD Projekt Red doing part of the project at least. Um, according to the official Witcher Three uh, a Twitter account, in handheld mode it runs at five forty, in docked mode it runs at seven twenty. Mm. So, I mean. There are going to be concessions that you have to take for something like that. Yeah. I mean, because that game, even on its lowest settings, looks so much fucking better than, than a game like Skyrim. And it's also so much more technically impressive. Um, like, I, I know I've said this before, and I will continue saying it. Red Engine 3, the engine that The Witcher 3 runs on, um, with how alive and how active and how open everything is has mm-hmm. got to be the most technically impressive and technic and stable engine that I've I've ever interacted with. And I say I ha- I have to specify interacted with because I've not really played GTA 5 a lot. I've not played Red Dead Redemption 2. I know those engines are big and technical and are capable of so much shit. Like I said with fucking GTA 5, they've built inside the engine that runs that game they built a tennis simulator that's better than any fucking tennis game that you've seen come out in the last 30 years Mm -hmm. they've built a golf game that's better than any other golf game you've seen in the last 30 years so i give them some credit but when it comes to the things that happen within the witcher 3's world the active npcs how they each have their own life their own schedule their own night you know whatever i have never seen a an engine accomplish that level of just openness and reality and immersion and also be stable as fuck like dude seriously like i've got over 225 hours on sky uh, on witcher 3 five of those hours at least bare minimum are me leaving the game running and falling asleep somewhere yeah and then it's still running and then i come back and the game's like oh hey man what's up but just been waiting for you buddy whereas if that was skyrim it would have crashed if were oblivion it would have crashed Any other open world game that I own yeah. that I play, it would have crashed in that time frame. Whereas Witcher was just sitting there on the on the pause screen that I left it on. I'm like, what's up, buddy? I've never had a game where I can alt tab out, do something, say something stupid in a group chat or in a Discord or on Twitter, and then go back to the game seamlessly, flawlessly. Yeah. As as I have Witcher three. So I can definitely say that the Red Engine three is tech so impressive. The fact that they've got that running on the Switch, I'm like, holy shit. I don't care about the graphical down downgrades. You have that with Doom. It still looks fine. Yeah. You know, it runs at 30 frames, but it still looks fine. It's not It's not anything where I want... Like, playing it mobile is always the one thing that is the benefit for the Switch. Yeah. And it's not... I'm not, like, dogging them for it. It's it's amazing that they can get that game. If, if they can get that game to run stably on there. Because that's the big if. You're still looking at 30 frames of maybe. Um, oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm completely I, on board And I'm, I'm one, the real test is if they go to the big city in Novigrad. We'll see what you get. I mean, yeah, or considering that. Or have like 75% of those NPCs just not on screen. I mean, considering that which my Which would PC, be hilarious if that's what Considering my do. PC, as it sits right now, is about on par or slightly above the Xbox One X. And when I'm playing in 1080p on Ultra... And I can even dumb that down to like medium and it's still like I still get some frame drops in Novigrad. You're right. That is the big fucking test right there. When you get into that city with 200 NPCs, 200 plus NPCs, 
if if it's if it lags out, that'll be that'll be a true test. That being said, man, um, I kind of trust CD Projekt Red. I do. I do too. I don't They're know one who of the Saber, few companies I do. I don't know who Saber Interactive is, but I don't believe that CD Projekt Red and Nintendo would have partnered with them to bring a game like this to Switch unless they had some measure of talent to do it. Yeah. So I doubt we'll get like I I I mean Panic Button did amazing with both Skyrim and I, did, I think they did Skyrim, um, Doom. Like the concessions they made for Doom were a little bit eh, but I understand why. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a it's a thing you had to make a lot of concessions on, um, but they did well. So if Saber Interactive can do half as well bringing this to Switch as Panic Button did Doom, it'll be fine. Like I really do believe mm-hmm. it'll be fine. So I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm yeah. just it's not it's not something where I'm like, oh, I, I want that. Um, I, I'm more I, I'm more I, just I like they did it. OK, cool. You buy everything again on the switch. I do. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> like I haven't bought in Resident Evil three or four or one or two. I, or I've any only other. bought Resident Evil four. Yeah, I, I, I mean, bought Resident Evil four. I'm, I've kept myself from that. Um, um, I mean, that's the only game I've bought for switch. And it wasn't a stupid like, oh, this game's nineteen cents. Let's see what it's about. Uh, um, uh, like that's the only major big game I've bought um, since Skyrim and Doom. <laughs> uh, no, I, I've bought games since both of those. That are well, big. I mean remakes, stuff um, that you own somewhere else and have beaten, played the shit out of somewhere else. To be fair, I haven't beaten Doom. Oh well, that's, that's <laughs> let's go ahead or, or at least could there. very easily play somewhere else and yeah. have a better experience. Um, so the, the beef, yeah, but I can't play it on the shitter, and that's the that's, thing that gets that's me. True. Um, seriously, that's all it takes. Like what? I, I didn't even take my Switch off the dock anymore. That's why it, it. I did for a while, and I I do transfer it between my two docks, uh, upstairs and downstairs. Right. Sometimes, but otherwise, it's usually like a YouTube machine at that point. The funny thing is, is I still I still. Um, I still play my Switch as a portable a lot. Like, that's how I started off. That's how I played, like, my first 150, 200 hours of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I still play it a lot that way. Um, probably mostly what I play is, like, casual stuff, though. Mm. Like, Defense Grid 2 quick or something. Quick pick up and play type Yeah, things. quick pick up and play things. Like, it's perfect for a, a Yeah, absolutely. Thing. Like, uh, like I said, Defense Grid 2 or Dead Cells or something. Dead Cells yeah. is, like, perfect for this game, the system, man. I love it um anyway yeah no i'm 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 kind of excited for the witcher 3 like i honestly ignored it because like it was leaked and there were people saying oh yeah it's coming and it's gonna happen i'm like oh i don't believe it i don't believe really like why and then it was a big thing of why and then it was announced and And i'm like just because i'm gonna fucking buy it honest to god most of these remakes for the switch i think have just been because fuck it why not (laughs) because they yeah just just because we can because we can uh, Mario and Sonic of the Olympic Games. Fuck All right, that. moving on. Um, yeah. No more Heroes Three. I I've never played any of these games. This game looks cool though. I keep thinking I need like I have No More Heroes Two uh-huh. on the PC when they ported it, but I heard again some of those things where I've heard it's a really bad port, so I never even installed it. Right. Um. But I hear you hear like I again. Great studio. They yep. make really. It's Studio Fifty One. Shoot, shoot a, yeah, Shoot Fifty One. Studio Fifty One. Something yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I make really, really interesting games, and it's just I never, never sat down to play it, and I always feel like I should, but I don't. And then this game looks interesting. I just, I'm like, eh. I, I, yeah, it's something I might, I might play. Um, one thing I heard people commenting about was uh, apparently they the first two games maybe maybe the second one i don't know there's a lot of like dismemberment and gore yeah uh because you swing around a fucking lightsaber basically and they were saying you know they don't not seeing any of that in the trailer is nintendo basically taking all that out or something so who knows i don't i mean i don't really care if they you know don't have that single aspect unless it's something where that's a big part of the game is you know the dismemberment physics and things you know how interesting it I, is. I don't know we'll see um, I don't know. One thing I, that I, was, I'm gonna play the second one I think before this one comes out one thing that was kind of cool that I thought they were dropping was a uh, Panzer Dragoon port or oh yeah they did show Panzer Dragoon um, it looks fucking cool yeah like I, ne- I, I, I remember I, playing a little bit of those games I never played Panzer Dragoon or because no, I never I had a Sega Saturn second one 
Um, I never had a Sega Saturn, and I don't remember. I think it was on Dreamcast, but I never had the game on Dreamcast. They released because it was a game everyone's wanted for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And I think they released a remake of one of the Panzer Dragoons on GameCube or PS2. Yeah, because I remember playing it on there, and it's it's a fun like sh- shooter like. You, you, it's like you it's control like, a dragon. And you shoot shit. It's uh, like yeah. Star Fox. It's all yeah. It's almost like Star Fox. I was gonna yeah. say it's like Star Fox, but with dragons. Yeah, it's like it's, that's it's fucking cool, right? So I'm I'm kind of interested for that. If it's not um, a sixty dollar game, I'll definitely grab it. Right. Yeah. For sure, man. Uh, I couldn't see them doing maybe more than forty. Yeah. But at the same time, it does. You know, it looks like a remake. It doesn't look like a new. I mean, that's exactly what it is, though. It is like, a re- okay. Yeah, it's a remake. Um, like a reimagining, I guess, almost. Yeah. Um, the last game they they launched was Panzer Dragoon Orto on Xbox. Oh, okay. It was on Xbox. That's yeah. where I played it. Then. Um, I knew Orto was the end of the title. Oh yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield. We got a bunch of gameplay of that. Oh um, yes, the Pokemon are on the fucking. There, it's a combination of random encounters and like pokemon on the field like how it was in let's go i know a lot of people criticize that i love that about let's oh my go. god it's one of the best parts it, it, of let's yeah, go. seriously it's great like if you didn't want so, to so good like if you were if your pokemon was poisoned or your party was very weak yeah. you could avoid encounters while you're trying to get yeah. back to the fucking pokemon center like how amazing is that yeah not having random encounters all the random time. random encounters in pokemon games like that um like i realized that for the longest time it was a core of the series, yeah, I'd much rather it be the way it was in Let's Go because if you're shiny hunting or if you're hunting for a rare Pokemon, it's just easier to find it. Yeah, it's also easier to lose it, but it's easier to find it, man. Like that, that capability, that sitting there and all oh, that Pokemon's popped up now. Cool, I can go catch it. That allowed me to complete my Pokedex. Yeah, well, that and Pokemon Go integration where I could transfer Mons over. Um, but it's like, like, dude, that's amazing to me. I love that. And the fact that they're bringing that back um, in Sword and Shield is, is awesome. Not to mention the new Mega Evolution, which is called uh, Dyna something. Uh, Embiggen? Dynamaxing? Dynamaxing, it's, I think is what it's called. It's Enlarged Monster. I dislike it. <laughs> I, I do, too. Um, I, we talked, I think we talked about it last week a little bit, that it's just kind of mm, just why, I guess. I, don't get me wrong. Know. If it's a like you fight a battle where both it's automatic, both Pokemon are embiggened. Yeah, to fine. make it look th- thematic, I, um, that's kind of cool. But otherwise, I'm just. I, but I didn't. I also didn't play the game that had Mega Evolutions as a component, so I haven't experienced that as um, like a a, com, a, a component I, of battling. I mean, looking at Dynamaxing and comparing it to Mega Evolutions as somebody who has played the shit out of four games that allowed mega evolution yeah i like the concept of mega evolution better yeah i still think they're both stupid oh okay see that's what i'm saying yeah no no mega evolution is to me aesthetically is better period because it's different right this just makes them big yeah but i mean just it, it in in execution in the battles like when you use it how often you can use it thing how overpowered it is that's the type of thing that i I have no idea of and i i can't you know say whether you know one way or the other whether it's good um i i I mean all right i don't like mega evolution but i also do like it yeah like it's kind of that weird dynamic where it's like a love hate type of thing um i like it because you know it it adds strategy it it can make it yeah, I it guess almost it's really seems, what it, is. It, it almost seems like cheating. Like you can hit this instant win button almost from the outside. I mean, definitely because I don't know if how you have the right Pokemon. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like if you're losing like, and then it's like, oh fuck that Charizard. Boop. Like you look at Mewtwo, right? Mewtwo has always been yeah. one of the most powerful Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Mewtwo's base stats are like 680, so he's like the second most powerful Pokemon in the game, base stat wise. Because the one there are a couple that exceed him, like Arceus. Yeah. When you mega evolve him into either form, his base stats go from 680 to 780. Yeah. His stats go way the fuck up. And if he's typed out right and you're using the right mega evolution, you're right. It's an automatic win. Yeah. Um, like, like it doesn't matter because there are stats of his that get enhanced so much that if you have the moves to take advantage of those stats, mm-hmm. you're fucking everything up in front of you. Yeah. You know, even if it's a Pokemon that Mewtwo's weak against, if you're typed right or if your moves are typed right, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, um, so like strategy wise, it adds some strategy. I think that's really cool. I also think it's just lazy. 
I don't know why. Maybe it's because and Biggin seems lazy to me. Because oh, it's, it's even lazy. lazy. Yeah, lazy. That, that, that's that's why have... I like. That's why I like Mega Evolution yeah. better than Dynamaxing. But I don't know why. I'm think... never gonna get call it that. Oh, it's gonna be in Large Monster or in Biggin. From, from now on for me. It is the worst name ever. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I don't know why I, I I don't know why I think Mega Evolution is lazy either. Fuck it's, it adds some cool shit aesthetically. It's really nice looking. You get a new form for a Pokemon. Make to, my monster um, grow. Like they get. There you go, you, Rita from Power Rangers. Who doesn't want to be Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers? You know, you throw a thing down to the ground and then you you boil up some water and you raise your staff and, and begin. You know, and exactly. Boom. Whatever she did. I don't fucking remember, okay? That was 25 years ago. Give me a Magic break. Magic staff made my monster grow. Oh, yeah. She threw her staff down. She throws her staff down, hits the ground next to him, and then... Which, I mean, it was always amazing how she had such incredible aim. Incredible aim and uh, somehow gets her fucking staff back every time. Oh, uh, But it's magic, so you got to explain shit. She uses a bonus action to summon it back to her, so it's exactly. fine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there's a... There's a a shadow blade. You can do that with shadow blade. Are I'm gonna you gonna make that mon- item in five, fifth ed? There's a there's a spell in fifth ed, a second level illusion spell called shadow blade, where you summon a blade of your choosing in your hand, and it just it hits things for two d8 psychic damage, mm-hmm. and it takes it, it's a concentration spell. You hold it for up to one minute, which is obviously ten turns in D and D. If you if if you get disarmed or you throw it away or whatever, you can use a free action or a bonus action. I don't remember to summon it back to your hand. Yeah. As long as you're holding the spell up. Nice. Yeah. And if you're in dim light or dark light, you automatically attack with advantage. So that's kind of cool. It's great for rogues. There's that's an item in uh, the big book of fucking items I bought. Yeah. Uh, it's but you can make copies of it, so you can have multiples and throw them <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, yeah, it also gets a light, versatile, and throw properties. Yeah. But you can throw it up to 20 feet and 60 at disadvantage. Okay, so we've gone on for uh, like an well, hour and a half. Uh, yeah. Roughly. So the one other major thing, real quick, then is fucking Breath of the Wild sequel. Oh, yeah. They showed yeah, way, yeah. Even, even for a teaser, like, because who knows how far out they are from this game. The compare that to the fucking Halo teaser we got for Halo Infinite, which mm-hmm. is coming out in 2020 mm-hmm. with the next box. Yeah. Um, they showed like this is basically what the story is. Yep. Link and Zelda go. She gets a haircut. They go underground to investigate some shit, and they fucking essentially find Ganon's body that's being held there, and they fuck up and wake him up. Well, the of ground. Course co- they do. Yeah, the ground collapses below them. Link goes to grab her. Something saves grabs her. Link. It saves her, but then the ground below him starts to collapse. So now the hand that was holding of uh, Ganon's body in place yeah. comes out and grabs yeah. them and pulls them back up. And then all of a sudden, you see Ganon's shadow yeah. on the wall. And then the corpse looks up at him. That like, turn. Ah! That's creepy as fuck. That is the creepiest I thing wait. ever. I do want to say I don't. I, I'd, I'd have to go fucking find it. Somebody on the R Zelda subreddit drew their inspiration of what Ganon will look like in this game from that. Yeah. Fucking looks awesome. Yeah. I cannot. There's so much this game's caused just this teeny little bit. And but like I said, way more than these other fucking teasers. Way more than that um the George R. R. Martin from soft thing. Way more than most other games that are coming out relatively soon. Way more than those showed. And already the hype is real for this. Yep. I'm I'm like completely fucking down. Oh yeah. Um. Of course I am. I'm Zelda even, trash. It I went even to, made we me to forget about today. how much I hate the goddamn weapon physics. <laughs> we went to Target today. I bought like three Zelda things. I had yeah. no need for. It. Spent like twenty six dollars. Whatever. I bought a pen. That's it. I bought the pen, the wallet, and the lanyard. So yeah. I mean, I'm Zelda. I, dude, I I love Legend of Zelda. I I, do I, too. I have for so fucking long. It is my favorite video game franchise ever yeah like seriously ever so uh give me more zelda <laughs> yeah that's it, it, it was just more zelda thank you nintendo um you've you've given us way more than any other conference gave us because they were all shit i mean i'm still looking for my perfect zelda game um oh, breath well, of the wild breath of the wild came close but if you took breath of the wild and you maybe doubled the durability of weapons because I don't care about the weapon breakage. I can kind of handle the weapon breakage, especially if you allow us to repair them. If there was a repair mechanic, I think, 
or an option to get like a really nice weapon you just obtained repaired, that would have been I would have at least mitigated a little bit the bullshit that was. That. I would say I would, I would say yes. But if we're going with the perfect Zelda game, then I don't need that at all. What I need is like oh, no. uh, a main sword, an upgraded sword, and right. then your final sword, which I'm okay sword. with too. But I like I don't the, I, like, I, I like, don't need that. My tent. my perfect Zelda game is um, you take open world concept like The Witcher Three, and you combine it with say Ocarina of Time. Yeah, you fuse those two together. You take all the good the fucking bad the amazing dungeon layout of ocarina of time because i i I loved my favorite zelda game is still majora's mask i love all the majora's mask as deep as it goes its dungeons are cool it's uh the puzzles are cool the the whole journal keeping the journal thing and doing the different events at different times is cool but that is not what i want for a perfect zelda game no no, no. what you want is a gimmick and yeah Whereas so with Ocarina know, of Time, you know. Ocarina of Time was that straightforward Legend of Zelda game. It was mostly linear. There were some things you could do out of out of uh, order, order yeah. but it was mostly linear. But you take that, you take the dungeon design of that game, the fact that it had dungeons to begin with, which is a huge problem with, and um, you you combine that with the open world coolness. I, I would say cool yeah. factor of Witcher Three. Where you can go and do whatever the fuck you want right away. You might get your ass kicked by a level forty-five Griffin at level two, but you can go and fight that thing if you really want to. Um, and like, just combine those two. Give us the open world of Breath of the Wild. Maybe take away the weapon durability, but keep the variety of weapons. I kind of like that. And um, give us dungeons, like standard mm-hmm. Zelda dungeons to explore, to die in, to figure out puzzles. Maybe not even necessarily get treasures at the end of, but have like a boss and something, you know, like, like give, give us, us that. treasures, give us items. Yeah, things like, like, like that. I think being more traditional and just add the open world to it. Yes. To be simple, that's that would be like the perfect. That would Zelda be the perfect Zelda game. Like, yeah. like I said, they always have some type of gimmick. Go back to the series roots because the very first Zelda game that was, pretty was an open-world yeah. Zelda game. Yeah, you could go straight to Dungeon 6 if you wanted to. Fuck, I remember um, playing the, the Master Second Quest, like starting on the Second Quest purposely, when as soon as I get the candle, going straight to Dungeon like 6 or whatever it was, under the burning bu- under the bush you burned over like seven screens over from where you started, and getting the, uh, uh, the Lion Key right away. So where I never needed a key for the rest of the game. <laughs> so it's like I remember doing that when I was like nine I don't know how I did it because I can go back and do it now and fucking die but I figured out a way to do it then so like that that's what I want though yeah that would be that the perfect open take, take choices just take the original Zelda game and translate it to Breath of the Wild and boom there you go there's your perfect Zelda game yeah you know you have your three or four swords in that game you have a couple of shields you have some armor upgrades but the game is open world. You go, you can go do Dungeon Two, and then go do Dungeon Four, and then go back and do Dungeon One if you want to. That's fine. Go for it, buddy. You can go fight Ganon with a stick in yeah. your underwear. <laughs> well, you can't do that in that original Zelda, but yeah, do yeah, that you can in do this that one. Now. Yeah, like, and you could win. Too. <laughs> That's so crazy. That, if you could fucking win, if you really, if you're good enough. With pots and pans and shit. <laughs> pot, a pot, and like a torch. Yeah. Or like you said, a stick. Just go. Sticks and shit. God, that was fun. I wonder uh, this. I, I had a thought that you know, that was the big complaint. One of the major complaints from people. This then so Breath of the Wild two, Breath of the Wild. Oops, all dungeons. <laughs> it's just nothing but dungeon. There is no dungeon. overworld. There's no overworld. It's just like in du- one continuous dungeon. <laughs> it's like it's. It, they turn it into a 3D Metroidvania. Oh God, yes. So like you, ju- you're no. just in one. <laughs> You're just in one Breath of the Wild sized dungeon. Jesus. It's all underground. And but I mean, that's the question of, you know, are they, because it's a sequel, it's not DLC. Yeah. Which is what I thought at first seeing. Yeah. It, I, thought I, for I did sure. too. When, cause like, all right, when they first started showing the teaser in the live, yeah. I don't know where the fuck I was, but I missed like the entire actual trailer. And I only saw the part where the castle was lifting out of oh. the thing. I don't know. Maybe I just, maybe the trailer came later and I didn't get it or what. That's why. I, oh, that's why you didn't respond until later. When, Cause I immediately sent, sent like, Oh fuck. Oh shit. 
Is this what I think it is? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm thinking, is it Breath of the Wild DLC? Yeah. And then it, set, it, it turned to that dark screen and said, the sequel to Breath of the Wild is in yeah. development now. I'm like, oh my God. Because they don't, they don't, it's not the first direct sequel. No, it's not. But they don't normally do that with Zelda games. They don't. At least not the mainline games. No. They did it with um, Well, I mean, the mainline Spirit games Tracks. they did. A more, a more Majora's Mask was well, a direct Majora's, sequel. Yes. It was a direct sequel. It yeah. happened, um, but it happened in a slightly uh, different timeline. Yeah. It's, um, it's it, a, it, okay, it is a direct sequel, sort of. Well, no, it, it is. is not like, it is not a direct sequel where like the end of the game, you, you see that coming. Right. You're a completely different world. There's like, you know, well, you're drawn um, into, there's no, there's no connective tissue to the original game other than Link and Apana. Um, well, no, uh, the game takes direct, takes immediately directs, uh, takes place after the end of Ocarina of Time. When he's turned back into a child at the end of Ocarina of Time. I know, I know. Navi he goes off, off and does that. It's yeah, a Navi, fine Navi flies off into the, into, into the top of the top yeah. right half of the screen or whatever. And then he goes to search for her. Yeah. And ends up, like he ends up going through whatever fucking forest he goes through and ends up in Terminal. Well, uh, most likely the Lost Woods. Right. Um, and dies. Um, yeah. That is the theory that he dies. It's, yeah, it's not he that dies and turns into a skull, uh, um, a skulltula. Because then you know the skulltula, the uh, dead hero or whatever, shows up to teach you moves in uh, Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. Yep. Oh, actually, and uh, in um, yeah, it's in the Fallen Hero timeline. It's in um, where uh, um, Twilight Princess as well. Yeah, he teaches you songs, teaches the wolf how to howl. Yeah, which is a little weird, but hey, it's cool. But either I mean, way, it's a, it's a hero either way, yeah, it's a direct sequel, but yeah. it's not a direct sequel in the way of like, oh, I remember this or that or the. Right. This is like taking. I wonder if they're going to use the same overworld, yes. or if I'm correct and yes. it's going to be oops no, all dungeons. No, it's, they're using the same overworld. That's been confirmed. Oh, they did say something. Like, okay. The producer said this takes place in the same exact high rule. Yeah. So the same exact map, same exact everything. Yeah. So that, but so that's that's cool and somewhat. Except, I mean, you know, they they're gonna change the areas, I'm sure, but it's like it's all stuff you've already explored. Yeah. Hopefully, they change. That's why. That's why you know them showing it underground kind of gives me that hope that it will be Zelda Oops All Dungeons. I think there's definitely gonna be some dungeon. Aspect I mean, to it. I mean that might be the big thing if the overworld's similar, but there's all these new dungeons. Yeah, like like uh, him awakening kind of, uh, sort of. Opens up something or, something or release, yeah. yeah, releases something that causes this this underground area, the subterranean area something. to start existing yeah. or something. I don't know. I don't care how they explain it. I just want it. Yeah, I, I want, want it. it I, and I'll I'll deal with if they do the weapon degrade again. But they might not. I mean, you start. Link has the master sword at the beginning of this trailer. Although um, I do remember at the end of Breath of the Wild because I did complete that one. Yeah. Um, the master sword does go inert. She can no longer hear the voice of the sword, and Link can no longer activate the power within. That is that is in the very last cutscene of the game after you defeat Ganon, and they're just talking, and they're doing like the what comes I don't after. Remember that? Yep. She can no longer hear the voice of the Master Sword that she had been hearing throughout the entire series. Yeah. And he can no longer activate the power. He's holding it. And it's like it's just a sword now. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, like I remember, I, he didn't say that obviously because he never fucking he speaks. Doesn't talk, but she like, said it's just a sword I now. Fuck that up like they did in the yeah Fallout games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I, I mean, it's happens. okay. It's obvious that he does say something at some point throughout the series. He's hot. Like, he responds to people. He, yeah. They don't treat him like he's silent. But, but um, although he is, but yeah, like they can read his facial features. I don't know. I, uh, you know what? They did do something. They did allude to that in other Zelda games. Yeah. Like there, I there can are see the, the way you're looking at me. Yeah. Yeah. Say stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I can't Maybe wait for Link it. Maybe Link communicates it's... telepathically. He could. Because he never says a fucking word. Midna. Yeah. Specifically, Midna treated you like she knew what you were saying. That That's one of my favorite. Because she's one of my favorite Zelda companions. She is. Yeah, no, so she, good. Like, in, I never in, I, I never got to play a lot of Twilight Princess, but Midna Twilight is Princess a cool so fucking. Good. One of my favorite She's a Zelda cool characters. fucking character. I, I, I'm I disturbed by the amount of There's porn a little, that exists of her. As there should. No. <laughs> it totally should be. <laughs> well, so. no. In her Twilight form, I'm 100% <laughs> for her, right? Like, yeah. when she's when she's that full, um, like, princess and she has term? no actual um, clothes on. Make porn of that. The little, like, fucking imp. The imp form. Them, it's like, what is wrong Why with Why is there porn of this? You know what? She, Short stacks. Yeah. That's the term for it. Short stacks. 
<laughs> Legend uh, of Zelda midget porn. Yeah, um, basically. But yeah, the uh, the one thing that it, I'm wondering if this is going to dabble a little bit in the Twilight Realm because that arm and the weird fucking shit that like was moving across the screen. I don't know. To me, that very very is very reminiscent of the Twilight in uh twilight princess uh, so, so i don't know maybe there's a chance that that'll be i mean it'll be interesting in to see here. how they, they 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 play it out um because i'm wondering what's that arm where's that from the, the arm is very much it's, it's theorized right now by a lot of people that the arms are very much related to the monks that you free oh yeah throughout okay, yeah the, that uh, makes sense yeah so um Maybe the monks bound Ganon. It's very well, possible, and you sitting there releasing them by freeing them from the shrines and getting the Hylias, the goddess Hylias power, yeah. like release Ganon, because they've done that before, right? Yeah, they did that no creating of time where you gathering the three stones and getting the master sword from the. Well, pedestal. that allowed Ganon to get to the. Yeah, it unlocked the fucking door to the golden realm where he yeah. could go in, and take the Triforce, and become yeah, the most. That's powerful. how he became. That's how he did it. So it's he like, waited for you. Yep. So it's like stupid kids fucked up. It also happened in a uh, fucking. What is the the other one? Uh, Wind Waker. When you sit there and you unlock the Master Sword, you pull it from the thing. Ganon, that's how Ganon wakes up. You remember? I thought he, he was awake the whole... No, he no, was... no, he was not. He was stored away under the oceans and you pulled the sword out. You awaken the sword and that yeah. breaks the seal that was holding him. Oh, okay. So they've done this before. This is this is this I is a thing. I could have swore he was. Oh, you meet him before you get the master sword, though. In that game, I think you. I think they do like a phantom. He's Ganon. a maybe he's a phantom or something. But he's yeah. around. He's scheming the whole time. Or no, wait. I'm sorry. You do not unlock him. You're right. What you do is you unseal the seal that was holding Hyrule. The water. The Hyrule away. Yeah. yeah. Which is why Phantom Tracks becomes a thing after that game. That's mm. a direct sequel. Um, spirit, yeah, spirit tracks. Spirit Phantom tracks. Hourglass. Phantom was, Hourglass. Phantom was Hourglass. Was the that. Yeah, Phantom Hourglass. Three Hour, in that uh, series. Fan, uh, Phantom Hourglass was a sequel to Wind Waker, and Spirit Tracks was a sequel to Phantom Hourglass. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. that. But you know, those. Those. I liked Phantom Hourglass. I, I never played Spirit it. Tracks. Um. But yeah. I, I. I'm. I'm down. I can't wait. Oh, Zelda. Man. Yeah. More Zelda. More yes, Zelda. Please. Always. Always. Always more Zelda. I fucking might have to go back and play more Breath of the Wild and try and play through some of the DLC that I paid for and never played. Yeah, same here. Like I, I um, I started playing the Trial of the Swords. Oh no, yeah, like, I did too. And there's not. I got to not like be done. floor nine, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah, I got past the first checkpoint and app- then a few floors, and was like, yeah. apparently, when you get to floor ten, it just gets so much easier. Does it? Yeah, that's what I was reading. Like other people who have completed it, like, yeah, once you make it to like floor ten, you start getting better shit, and you can just breeze through it. Well, maybe not breeze through it, but it's easier than the first nine floors. I, that would be interesting if it, it is I that mean, kind of difficulty curve. Or it's still because you really, have nothing. Up it's until that it's point. still really difficult, but it's like it, when you get to that point, um, it's manageable. It's way more manageable, I guess, is what it is. The one thing that I never really did much that I see people, and we're just going on and on and on, but people that got really good at using the magnet thing mm-hmm. and magnesis and, and hitting the things with boxes and, and yeah, yeah doing yeah. that stuff i thought i always like was i would just smack people around and do barely any damage and eventually kill one moblin but if there's more than one mob i'm i'm fucking dead yeah if that's what i was trying to use but i've seen people that will kill a fucking army of them with one metal box and just bombs just yeah. just over and over me i'm like running like a retard throwing bombs and half the time blowing them up in my own fucking hands yeah um i i kind of do the the whole drop a metal box on a monster's head thing in in master mode master mode is is like all right i'm not great at these games I'm not getting close to enemies i'm good enough yeah like right like i can i can sit there and and um i can sit there and do some shit but um I don't know, man. I, I'm not good at them. I never, I, I never got really good at parrying. I never got uh, really good at, at all that stuff. But, you know, I still love the game. And I, I do that in Master Mode. I'll drop a fucking metal box on an enemy's head like two or three times, distract other enemies with metal boxes, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was our E3 talk and then a bunch of Breath of the Wild because the game is awesome and... Zelda. <laughs> yeah, no. great. Zelda or Zelda trash. Or Zelda. Oh, um, let's not forget about uh, too late. Sony. Oh yeah, Sony's conference. Sony's was... conference was um. Yeah. 
yeah um anyway <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed our e3 talk you know we all rambled on about well you know what you got to give us some credit we didn't ramble on about the witcher 3 for 45 minutes so hey go for us we didn't do that this time um more important things more important things like breath of the wild 2 I, and i could uh, ramble more about cyberpunk but yeah i gotta play eh, it first you know i don't i want to play it before i care um but anyway you know if you guys liked what we talked about like hearing our stupid voices you know yeah. go give us a like share subscribe uh you know give us some money on patreon and join our discord we got a discord we do shit yep. we say things sometimes we're talking it sometimes <laughs> um you can bitch at us there yeah no if you guys or got not, ideas chat with us follow us on twitter you know yeah. tweet at us i i respond you know sometimes it's snarky sometimes it's positive but i always respond and uh that was it you know, for the Ungodly Geeks. I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. If you really love us, you can hit us up on Patreon and give us a dollar. Yep. Or more than a dollar. I, I, you know, I said that already, but now oh, you say it again. You? Oh, well, I did. I, didn't, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. All right. All right, guys. Fuck EA. <laughs> Fuck Capcom. <laughs>